I outplayed your scatters because I forgot my I forgot to fill my water, so I had to go and get, make that and do that real quick. And I I outplayed your scatters uh in the process. Easy clap. <laughs> All right, welcome everybody. How is everybody doing today? We have some plans for today. You just get a match late. Well, I'd rather have a match late than a scatter. So, you know, it, it kind of works. I, I guess I got both this way. So I don't know how well it worked actually, but fair enough. <laughs> All right. Assemble dual lists. We have a couple things to do today. We have a couple things to do today. Uh, we're going to dip our toes back into a little bit of TCG content. Um, obviously, we've been playing a lot of Master Duel this week. I want to do some of the some of the TCG stuff as well. So we're going to check back in to the TCG and see what's been happening over the last uh, like weekend. You know, what kind of decks have been doing well at regionals and so on and so forth. It also is um, Maze of Millennia release date. So I have, uh, obviously, I have a box here courtesy of SmartGuard that we're going to open in just a little bit and and we're going to pull hella bonfires guys uh, it's going to happen we're going to pull hella bonfires um collectors rares all that kind of stuff it's surely going to happen it cannot go wrong we will not pull uh we will not pull a, an ancient chant trust me it's going to be bonfire all right <laughs> and then later on Later on, we're gonna we're gonna talk about some a maze of millennia related stuff, you know, like transaction rollback rulings and that kind of stuff. But we also have the um the first episode of the the Josh and Farfa podcast today, which is gonna be called uh, Heart of the Cast. Which, if you like that name, it was my idea. If you don't like that name, I had nothing to do with it. So pick your poison. Either way. That's going to happen later today. I think we said uh, 2 p.m. So we're gonna, that's that's going to be that's going to be fun. Did you hear Lorcana announced competitive and world championship? Uh, I did not hear about that. I haven't uh, I've played a little bit Lorcana when it came out just with my fiance, just a, a very little bit, but I haven't really played it much uh, since and I haven't really kept up with it. But that sounds cool for the for the community. OK. Um, I mean, yeah, first things first, let's hop into the warm up and then see, uh, see what's, see what's going on with this maze of millennia box. All right. Who are you? Oh, is this the Kuro rider again? It is. Okay. All right, we got that one. This is, I want to say Lulu. Yep. Uh, with the letters, it always looks like a contract sort of thing, but I don't know which one that would be. I don't know this one, I don't think. First bill, okay. Oh, that's a gimmick puppet. Uh, is that Bisk doll again? It's not. I think it is a gimmick puppet though. It's maybe it's a gimmick puppet spell card. Condolence puppet. Okay. Uh, is that a? Sh it's either Shiranui or it's the Smith. Is it Kotetsu? It is the Shiranui. But what, which one is that even? Also Smith? Shenry Smith. Oh, okay. Okay, fair enough. Mm -hmm. Rocket? But... No, it's not rockets. It's, cy uh, it's cyber stuff. But uh, it's a spell trap. I don't know what that is. Cyanet Cascade. Good thing there's only like 200 Cyanet cards. So maybe should have try and guess it. See how long it takes. Winds over the ice barrier. That's a cool looking card. Uh, wait. 
Is the is that an Aturia? No. Flower bot? Flower bot. Dude, where's the time gone? We're already playing for freaking three minutes. Where are my points? Uh is that it's not meltdown, is it? No. Magistus Theurgy, if that's even how you say it. Uh, Vampire Sucker, I think. Uh, is it Instant Fusion or Ready Fusion? Ready, right? Instant isn't uh, orange in the background. Uh, okay, that I think is the pre-prep. It might be, it might also be Ritual Raven or whatever it's called. That's the thing on all those? Okay. Uh, is that an, it's, 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 is that an Aquamir? Kishki Aquamir, yeah, nice. What is this? Oh, something origin. Like a, or I don't know if it's Vendred re-origin or just origin or re-Vendred origin. Okay, that one. They have very weird names. The yeah. Oh, Time Wizard. God damn it. Zoomed one time too much. I knew that already. <laughs> DNA transplant? DNA checkup? Because I know it's not surgery. Okay. It looks like a Kawaki, but I don't know for sure. It's not. Okay. Good. Uh, I think that's Sazank. No, it's a Karakuri, though. Oh, Karakuri. It's a ninja. Is it quick? No. Nanashik? Oh, really? Which one is it then? Bushi. Shit. I've seen this one, but I don't know what it's called. Fossil Tusker. Fortune Lady Wind, right? Wind. Uh, I think that's a Griffer. Like this one? Yeah. Fable Chawa? Augers. Mm -mm. Another revendred. Okay, today's a vendred kind of day, which is not good. Okay, that's ZW. I'm skipping it. It's dumb. I should learn those because I do realize whenever it is one of those, but I just never know which one is which. So, like, I should just look at them once. Because I always recognize it's those. Naturia Mosquito? Yeah. Okay, you got a lot of fire explosion going on here, but... Is that a Salamangrade card? It is, yeah. It's just not one of the playable ones, unfortunately. 
uh ryu kishin no uh what is the what is the the the, the rota called that searches torrential isn't it that fury of kai ryushin yeah that one i think it's that one yeah That's another Karakuri card, I think, but it's it's one of the spell traps. I don't know it. Like I don't know the name. Gold Dust. Oh, Ice Edge. Oh, I need to open the door. My fiance doesn't have a key. Never mind. She does have a key. It's fine. We only lost like half a minute. Uh, wise Strix or Force Strix? Force. Uh, Arcane, Arcana Force. Uh, the Dark Ruler. Aid Hain. Uh, Kami Critter. <laughs> there we are again. Uh, Carbo Crab. I don't know, man. Is it even a Kami Critter? It does look like it, but it might not be. No, oh, it was a Christian. Okay, good thing I started skipping. Majestic Dragon. Isn't it that little tuner guy for Converging Vils Dragon? Okay. Well, clearly the reason for us not having that many points is that I stood up and left for like a, a little bit, right? Is that Deer Note? Because otherwise, I mean, everyone knows this was going to be an insane round, right? So we don't have to worry about it. I don't know this one. Uh, that is a Time Thief. Time Thief... Rewinder or Regulator or something like that? Rewinder? No, that doesn't exist. Time Thief... Oh, just Winder. Right. Uh, Ecclesia. Yep. Mm, road Warrior. Yep. Oh, I know that. Oh, I know this one. I need one more. What is that? General... Gunnard? Oh, it's an ice barrier. Right. Yeah, I've seen it like a bunch of times. Is that Orichalcos? No. That's messed up. What is it then? Pearls of the Circle? Uh, that's a Hieratic. But not one of the good ones. Azar, maybe? No. Sutek? Okay. No. That was just process of elimination because I know some of them. Uh, that's Umi Ruka. Umi, wait. Ruka? 
Umai Ruka. Umi Ruka. This one. Yeah. I didn't know it had two eyes. Where's it have two eyes? Uh, here, right card, isn't it? No. Gravy Rose. Uh, Luna Light Fusion. Mm. Oh, that's an that's a link two, that's a link two dragon, but I don't know what it's called. Samsara, is it this? No. Army lure, ah, this one. It might be this one. It's a link two dragon, right? I remember reading it at some point. Hmm. This one I don't know. Reverse Buster. That is Exiton. Wait. Oh, Steel Swarm Roach. I'm sorry. Same thing. Somewhat. Same concept. My bad. Uh, that's another Evil Swarm, but I don't know the name of this one. Or Steel Swarm. Whatever. Same thing. Steel Swarm. <laughs> no matter what I say, it's always going to be the other one. Okay, that's an Amazonas. I think one of the new fusions. But... Uh, Augusta? Augusta. That is a new fusion, right? Yeah. Uh, oh, another... Not the Constellars, man. Stop giving me Constellars. Maybe it's Ohm. No, Vylon, whatever. It's a Vylon, I think. I don't know which one it is. Ept. Sick. Uh, Trap Jammer. Yeah. And here we have... Oh, this is the... I've seen this one. This is like a Performa Pal spell, I think. Yeah. And this is a roid. Like Super V, Croid, Mega, Omega, LOL, roid. Okay, well, 7.30. For how bad of a start it was, it's not even that bad. Come on. It's not even that bad. At, at this point... At, at this point... Uh, this is not even that bad. Come on, man. It's alright. <laughs> Also, keep in mind, I was gone for a whole 30 seconds during that. So, you know, keep that in mind in your assessment. <laughs> okay, we have a dark monster with big stats and old. No, wait, it's a vanilla. Dark magician angle? Uh, okay. It's from 2002, and it's a large vanilla spellcaster. Wait, level 8? Level 8 or... What, which, which one's that? It has to be Cosmo Brain. Yeah, uh, Cosmo Queen, I mean. Yeah. Well, that was easy. Okay. That was easy. All right. This is one of the cards, I believe, that came out in the... I think this was just a McDonald's promo. I don't even know if this came out in any other way. Like, I mean, maybe recently it has, but back in the day, I think it was... Uh, I think it was just a McDonald's promo, which is messed up. The fact that they gave McDonald's or whatever... I, I think it was McDonald's. I, I think the fact that they gave them a better card than the freaking Ace Monster of the series is kind of... Uh, kind of weird, champ. <laughs> Uh, Keon, thank you for the nine months. Yeah, that was a that was a thing back then. I mean, people did just didn't care. It was a habit for friggin' I don't know. Yeah, uh, bearded puck, thank you for the prime. Appreciate that. Thank you. And uh, Arcane, also thank you for the prime earlier. 
It has three prints, yeah, but I think it took a while for it to get reprinted, but yeah. Happy Meal Enjoyers Destroying Virgin DM Andes. That certainly is a sentence that you have just uttered. All right. <laughs> now guess the price of the OG print. McDonald's promo from 2002. You know what? I will, I will try to guess it, but I have, I genuinely have no idea, but I can imagine, you can, I can imagine that that shit's expensive, like, because I, I wouldn't know how to freaking find that. I'll say a hundred. Let's look it up. Hold up. Let's look it up. Cosmo Queen. This, this looks like the old one. Yeah, McDonald's promo pack. Let's go for let's go for near mint. Hey, I was spot on. 90 is the cheapest one. I mean, I, I just said 100 because it sounded nice in my head. I actually I had no idea, but I'm apparently the best at, at guessing card prices. Ruxin, bring me back for redemption on season two. I'll be ready this time. <laughs> okay. Moving on. <laughs> Wanted reprint in Happy Meal. Imagine. <laughs> Imagine they put Bonfire in the next Happy Meal, dude. Oh my god. That'd be so funny. <laughs> Thank you for the 16 months as well. Appreciate that. Thank you. All right. Maze of Millennia, release date. Maze of Millennia, release date. Which means... We have a box from SmartGuard. That we can open up right now. And uh, we're gonna definitely pull a bonfire. There's no way we will not pull a bonfire right here, right now. Alright, let me see. Is this better? No, this is... Ah, wrong camera. Okay. This is the way we have to do it. All right. Once again, as per usual, when a new set drops, shoutouts to SmartGuard for, um, for sending over one box of the thing to me. So we're going to open that right now. Uh, also, I, I have a new mat for this, for this uh, top-down camera setup. I, I figured it'd be cool to have one that doesn't have much going on, just zones. So I got this one, which I think is, is cool. Uh yeah, okay. Let me let's have a gamba. What should the gamba be? What should the gamba be? Do you guys want a gamba on whether we pull a, a bonfire? I think so. Let's let's just do bonfire question mark. Bonfire question mark. Yes, no. You have a minute to predict what we're gonna pull. Or like if we're gonna pull a bonfire, because bonfire is the biggest chase card. You know, uh, so we're simply going to be split in chat right now. We're simply going to be split split between bonfire believers and bonfire doubters. That's all. No other cards included. No other. Nothing else. Nothing else you can gamble on right now for the next like 30 seconds or something. <laughs> Don't worry. I spent 140k on no means you will get it 100%. Ah, uh, you're... You're hedging your bets, I see. The the classic, I, I, I'm hedging my bets. I'm putting against the result that I want. I see. All right, let me open this up in the meantime while you guys predict. In terms of other things I want, obviously, I mean, transaction rollback isn't a bad pickup. Uh, thrust, personally, uh, I'm going to say right now, if we pull a triple tactics thrust, that's what's going to be given away because I already have my playset. So if we pull a thrust, I'm not going to need it. So you guys can have it as per usual. Um, and the same goes for some of the other stuff in here. I have to see what I pull. Uh, but as per usual, everything I don't need, I'm going to give away. Um, I don't know exact. I don't remember exactly what's in here. And, and we're going to see when I pull it. But something like thrust, for example, is not something I need. Uh, so I'm going to give it away if we pull it. So you'll give away bonfire? Well, bonfire, unfortunately, I am going to need. So, you know, that is one of the one of the ones that I would keep if I pulled it. But, okay. 
Uh, he reached to Alpha. Thank you for the six months. Appreciate that. All right. I'm gonna move the mic a little bit to the side. You guys let me know if you if you still hear me fine so that it doesn't occupy any space on the screen. This should be fine like this. And we have 24 packs ahead of ourselves. Is the Gamba over? Can we start opening? The Gamba is over. All right. The hype train has started though. Phenomenal. If we reach hype train level three, we will surely pull a bonfire. It's gonna happen. All right, pack number one. I forgot the I forgot the layout of these. Uh, like uh, where the hollow is. I think it's at the very back. So yeah, we've got oh we got the first earthbound. We've got a Melusik. We've got Gazelle. We've got full armored Black Ray Lancer. Aren't these the guys that just came out in? What was it? Age of Overlord, literally? Or is that an old card? I don't know, I remember. We got the rare Jet Synchron, and we got Earthbound Prison. They're old? Okay. Uh, they reminded me of them, but okay. They, they're different guys. I see, I see, I see. Okay, the Hollow is indeed in the very back. Okay, we got Asla Piscu, Triangle O, Totem Pole, Combat Wheel, Salamandra with Chain, Supreme King Dragon Odd Eyes, and Earthbound Servant Geo Griffin. I'm actually happy about picking up the Earthbound stuff. Uh, we are gonna make a, we are gonna have a stream next week where we're gonna build Earthbound Runics, just as a heads up. That is going to happen. That is in the works. So I'm gonna put all the Earthbounds to the side, and we have a couple ones. We got the first Rescue Ace reprint. We got another of the Lancer, and we got a, only Earthbound super rares today. That is massive foreshadowing for a, um, for a, what's it called? Harmonic Synchro Fusion. As an ultra rare. Did any of the Earthbounds get collector's rare prints, by the way? I don't know all the collector's rares. I don't know if we even, if we even know all the collector's rares. Okay, we have the first non-Earthbound Hollow, which is Ashoka Pillar, which is not even a terrible card, but, you know. Two URs per box? I actually don't know for certain. I thought it was three. I thought it was three ultras, but I might be wrong. I ain't no pack opening expert. All right, we have uh, Multifaker. We have Emergency and Rare. Salamandra Fusion. D-Synchro. Supreme. Oh, 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 oh. What is this? Oh. Oh, God. I got baited because the, the Supreme King Dragon Clear Wing has, like, a little... I don't know, silvering on the side. And that's why I thought it was going to be a collector's rare. But it was Arcana Force the Fiend. I've been, I've, I, I've been, I've never feel, I, okay, well, I, I, yeah, I've never been so disappointed in my life. I, I genuinely thought it was going to be a collector's or a, or a quarter century because it had like silvering on the side, the, the freaking thing. God damn it. I've been baited. It's the same on this one, actually. I don't know. No, that's the wrong ultra rare spell, man. Not the Eye of Illusion. Okay, one ultra rare down. One ultra rare down. No, it's not good. It's not great. The worst one? Well, I mean, that means uh, it can only get better from here if that's actually the worst ultra rare. But, you know. We'll see. The Synchro, Supreme King Dragon Dark Worm, and a Turbulence. All right. Let me skip that song. Cool, quite. Is there really? Is there only one quarter century in here? By the way, is it only the? Is it only the junk guy? The junk Synchron, Hundred Eyes, Eloquitus. Salamangre Fusion, yada. Uh. I told you, I'm not even surprised. I am not even surprised because I told you we were going to pull a bonfire. I have told you that we're going to pull the bonfire. It worked. Yeah, shout outs to the person who put 140k points into no bonfire. Shout outs to you. <laughs> 
There we go. We stay winning. We stay winning. Jesus Christ. Okay. We saved uh, like 70 bucks right now as we speak. How much is Bonfire as right now? Has it gone down since release? Like since now is the first day that everyone can sell it on cart market? It's still 70. All right. Well, we got Flame Swords Realm. It went up since yesterday. Well, that's just unfortunate. Because, I mean, I still have to pick up two more, probably. Un unless, for some reason, you can pull two in the same box. Because, yeah. What if you get another c uh, collector's rare bonfire? Well, then I'm just the luckiest, uh, the luckiest person on Earth. Oh. Has anyone, has anyone opened Ultra and Collector's Bonfire in the same freaking box? That'd be insane. Yeah. Is this also a new card? Greater Linewalker? If you control a Synchro Monster and have a Synchro Monster in your grave, you can special summon this card from your hand. Uh, during your main phase, add an Earthbound Immortal from deck or grave to hand. If an Earthbound Immortal is special, you can make... Okay. That's old? Okay. I didn't know that. I, didn't, I haven't seen this card before, so... Synchro Chase! Prime Banshee, Fighting Flame Dragon, Chimera the Flying Mythical Beast, Contain, Earthbound Servant Geo Gremlin, and Bunbuku, the first Bunbuku. Sweet. Is the last Ultra uh, Thrust or Rollback? Well, I mean, that would just be insane. I'm, I'm going to be honest with you. Everything from here on out is free, is free rolling. I'm free rolling right now because I have the bonfire. That's all I really wanted. Uh, so everything from here on out is just is just bonus. Ah, I dropped it. What is it? Stone sweeper. That was anticlimactic. Fighting Flame Dragon into Earthbound Servant Geo Grasha. God damn it, how many different Earthbound Extra Deck monsters did they make? I didn't re are these all new? I didn't realize it was this many. Dude, Earthbound is Earthbound the biggest like archetype in here? Four? Oh, this is all four. Okay. Alright. It's funny because I probably read all of them on stream because we always read new cards. Uh, but I tend to, because we read so many of them, I tend to forget at some point what, what every archetype is going to get. Four in this set and one in Age of Overlord. Really? I don't remember an Earthbound being in Age of Overlord. Which one was that? We have Melusik, Gazelle, Black Ray Lancer, Jet Synchron, Supreme King Gate Zero, and another Earthbound Prison. Gremlina. Oh, they gave them Geo Gremlin and Geo Gremlina? That is funny. Cyclone, Horned Saurus, Ring Announcer. We haven't pulled that for whatever reason at all yet, I don't think. Doppel Warrior, Alert, Supreme Rage. And the first Hydrant. We got the first copy of Rescue Ace Hydrant in the building. Hydrant is mega short printed. I don't know anything about those kind of things. I've seen some images online, but since I have, I'm not really the kind of guy who opens a lot of product, I, I stay out of those kind of assumptions, discussions, whatever. I, I, I don't know. It might be. And eight. <laughs> I said earlier we were not gonna put an pull an ancient chant, so I, I I guess I was wrong about that. We did pull ancient chant. At the same time, I also said we were gonna pull bonfire, and I was right about that. So I I would I I prefer being wrong on not pulling ancient chant than being wrong on pulling bonfire. So, uh, it feels like we we dodged a bullet here because if this bonfire wasn't here, um, 
we would be in dangerous territory. Like this, this box could have been like under ten bucks without the, without the bonfire. The bonfire kind of bailed us out there. <laughs> Whew. I mean, unless we get a collectors, of course, we can. We still can. We have like six packs left. We could get a collectors. It's not impossible. Believe, guys, believe. High top Terra. Is that an Ogama? <laughs> God damn it. Flame Swords Realm. Where is my collector's rare? Has anyone seen it? I am missing a collector's rare. I cannot seem to find it. Clueless. We got Clueless. You haven't pulled the good Flame Swordsman trap yet? Uh, which one is that? Is that a rare or super rare? Or like a ultra? We got another Stone Sweeper. Gage, thank you for the 14 months, sir. Appreciate that. Welcome back. Ultimate Flame Swordsman. Last pack. Do we get the last pack? Collector's Rare Magic. Let's see it. We've done it once before with the Dark Armed Dragon. Remember that? Last pack of the box, quarter century? That was hype. Not this time, though. Not this time. The Armored Exceed. I'm not going to complain. I'm not going to complain whatsoever. We got the bonfire. That's all that counts. But goddamn, the bonfire carried this box. Uh, the bonfire carried this box because, look... I wanted to pick up some of these Earthbound rares and super rares, but they do not carry the weight of a box. Uh, the value of a box, rather. Uh, and neither do the Eye of Illusion and the Ancient Chant. So that, that third Ultra better, better be Bonfire if your box is like this one. So, you know, hey. Alright, so I, I mean, look. I genuinely wish I could have given you guys a thrust from this, but uh, it's going to be an Ancient Chant and an Eye of Illusion that I'm going to be giving away because I obviously I need the bonfire for myself. And uh, I wish I could have given you a better Ultra Rare to give away, but it is what it is. I cannot control these poles. So an Eye of Illusion and an Ancient Chant is what you're going to get this time around. And I'm going to set up the giveaway as we speak. Nah, bro, it's all right. Keep them. <laughs> no, I'm going to give them to someone. Hold up. Uh, Nightbot, was it? Wasn't it? Yeah, okay. Nightbot, giveaways. Everyone. E-word. Um... Up. All right. Uh, all you have to do is type maze into the into the chat box right now. You only have to do it once. It's not case sensitive. It's not EU only. Anything anyone can can take part. All you have to do is type maze once. And I'm gonna I'm I'm just gonna select one winner honestly for both of the cards. Like some one lucky winner is gonna get both uh, the Eye of Illusion and the Ancient Chant. And we're going to draw a winner at like, I don't know, 45. So in like a minute. No hydrant? Okay, I'll throw in the hydrant as well. I don't need the hydrant either. You're right. I, don't, I, I didn't know the super hydrant was something that people wanted. But I'll add the, I'll add the hydrant. I don't need the hydrant either. Okay. Which, honestly, now that you said that, it might be the most valuable thing you just won. 
<laughs> but uh, okay, it is 45. I'm gonna draw a lucky winner, and uh, it is going to be Treeso 03. Treeso 03, you win these three. You win the Hydrant, the Ancient Chant, and the Eye of Illusion. Congratulations. Once again, shoutouts to, shout outs to SmartGuard for sponsoring this box and making this possible. Uh, all you need to do is message me your, um, your address where I, where I have to send these cards either, on, either on, on Twitch directly or you can do it on Discord as well, whatever you prefer. Just shoot me a message and I'll get these cards out to you. Okay. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> Type your home address in Twitch chat. No, don't do it in Twitch chat. Shoot me a DM. <laughs> do not put it into the Twitch chat right now. <laughs> you try this every time, Scrub, by the way. I remember you doing this exact same thing a while ago. <laughs> okay. Chat, plan for today. Plan for today is uh, mostly TCG, just just hanging out, talking about TCG, about some things that have been going on. Um, and then at 2 p.m., at 2 p.m., we're going to have the podcast recording for the very first episode of the podcast that Farfa and I are going to start, um, and hopefully do for a long time, depending on how well it's received. But we're going to do the first episode uh, later today. Until then, we have about like a little bit more than an hour. Um, so whatever we do, whatever we start doing now, we'll probably have to interrupt at some point for the, for the thing. But that's fine. The first thing I thought that would make sense that I wanted to quickly take a look at and talk about. Since we just opened Maze of Millennia, I felt like it made sense to talk about another card that was in Maze of Millennia. We didn't pull it, unfortunately. But... Um, the card is Transaction Rollback, and after Bonfire, it is probably the most impactful new card in Maze of Millennia. So, and there has been, I noticed it this morning, and people have been asking me in chat about it, so I figured we might as well, we might as well do a, a small segment on stream about it to just clarify some, some things. Uh, and we're going to do that right now. Is it going to be on Spotify? It is going to be on Spotify, yes. It is also going, it's going to be, it, it's going to have its own YouTube channel, and it's going to be on Spotify. Um, as well, so, yeah. <laughs> Dude, it was just an ancient chant and an eye of illusion. I think you're good. You should try that gambit another time. Try that gambit, like, I uh, try that when we actually pull, like, a thrust or something like that, you know? Uh, but thank you for the eight months. Also, Siat, thank you for the prime as well. Um, the YouTube channel hasn't been set up entirely yet, so I can't link it to you yet, but I will make sure you guys can get the links to whatever platform you want to watch the podcast on or listen to, this, to the podcast on um, at some point. Okay, so the reason why I thought of doing this was because I saw uh, Tombox uploaded a video this morning, and I, I figured we might, we might as well just take a look at what he says because he's doing a lot of ruling based content i think and i don't think we've uh, we've actually watched uh, an mst tv video on these kind of things ever in the past so i'm, I'm curious about how he's kind of you know uh, talking about this entire situation because there there is some things that are not clear about bonfire and even though i've been playing this game for a long time sometimes there are rulings that I don't feel comfortable, you know, giving you guys a decisive answer about, because I'm not the ruling kind of guy, but yeah. Today's ruling video is all about transaction rollback, or Fake Feather, or Trap of Darkness, or Labyrinth Barrage, they're the same thing. It's a trap card copying the activated effect of a different trap card. Hey guys, this is Tom Box, and welcome to the ruling video. I know why you're here, because you don't want to look like the fool when you're arguing with an inferior duelist about transaction rollback. I know it's gonna happen because there's a lot of complexity to this card. How does the copying work? What can you copy? What can't you copy? How does it even resolve? All that will be answered within the four ruling questions that I'm gonna give you. I'm gonna see how you guys will tackle this. Oh, it's a quiz. Okay, even better. I didn't know that. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, just for context, I don't know. Do we do we show the card at some point? All right, let me let me pull up the card just so we have context for everyone. Transaction rollback. Uh, pa -pa -pa, transaction rollback. Before we do any of it, let us look at the effect together. 
Let me make sure you guys can see that. All right. So, pay half your life points, target a normal trap in your opponent's graveyard, except transaction rollback. This effect becomes that card's activation effect. You can banish this card from your graveyard and pay half your life points, then target a normal trap in your graveyard, except transaction rollback. This effect becomes that card's activation effect. You can only use one transaction rollback effect per turn and only one stat turn. For the matter of this ruling whatever it's not it doesn't matter which of the two effects you're using whether you're copying your opponent's trap or your own trap uh the question that often happens is when like you're talking about um copying another card's effect right is not the same as copying everything that is written on the card because um there are there is text on a card that is not part of its actual effect, right? It's things such such a thing as the cost of a card, which if you activate one card that just copies the effect of another card, it does not copy the cost. You typically the way this works is you don't have to pay the cost of that card, which leads to um, the ability to copy a card like I don't know Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, which uh, its cost is this card one card from your hand, then target a card on the field and put it back to the top of the deck right but it can be i i do understand why this kind of stuff is confusing because um you don't have to pay the cost when you copy the effect of phoenix wing wind blast right which is something that happens before the effect right um which is cool but another thing that happens before you resolve the actual effect and is not actually part of the effect is the the targeting part right like it's it's you have to you have to you have to announce a target before resolving the effect right and um what happens if i if i try to copy the um if I try to uh, if I try to copy a card like Phoenix Wing Wind Blast, you know, I, I I don't have to pay the cost, but how does it work if I have to select a target and all that kind of stuff? And I, I just want to say stuff like this can even be confusing to uh to veteran players, to even to myself sometimes. I have to go back and be like, hey, what what exactly was the interaction here, right? Targeting isn't cost. Yes, that is also something that is true. Um. Even though a lot of people refer to everything that is written before the semicolon in a in a in a in a cards text, uh, to, they refer to it as cost. But targeting, like for example, let me just pull up Phoenix Wing Wind Blast because um, it's the card we just talked about. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. Uh, and it is I, this sort of stuff is very weird and confusing. I will say it. I I I I do think so myself that this kind of stuff is is confusing. Um, this card reads: this card one card, then target one card your opponent controls. Semicolon. Place that target on the top of the deck. Now, this is the effect of the card. This is the effect. Place that target on the top of the deck. But everything in front of the semicolon is is not. This is not all cost. The cost for this card is only this. This is the cost for Phoenix Wing Wind Blast. This card, one card. This is not something that is regarded to as cost. This is just an activation requirement, which is different, right? Everything before the semicolon is this card's activation requirement. Part of the card's activation requirement is the, the cost. The other part of its activation requirement is targeting a card your opponent controls, right? Which is, I, I understand that it's confusing. I agree. I agree with you. I'm just trying to break it down in a in a in a in a simple way, right? This is the entire text of the card. This is its effect, right? This is the activation requirement for the effect, and this is the cost. All right, uh, and this is what's very often. Um, confusing about transaction rollback because what exactly happens if you try to copy phoenix wing wind blast with um with transaction rollback right because you know what what exactly do you copy what do you have to do can you even do it if you don't have to pay the cost do you fulfill the activation requirements all that kind of stuff right so yeah, that's what we're talking about just to see who's actually going to be the fool when it comes to this particular question. And if you're a judge, how are you going to answer it? But anything related to transaction rollback will be in this video. So if you're going to enjoy this one, hit that thumbs up button, hit subscribe, ding that notification bell, and let's go through some transaction rollback.
Question number one, this is pretty basic. We have transaction rollback in the graveyard with a Horn of the Phantom Beast. If you guys don't know what Horn of the Phantom Beast does, it targets one beast or beast warrior monster you control. Equip this card to that target, it gains 800 attack. Pretty basic stuff. And if the equip monster destroys opponent's monster by battle and sends it to the graveyard, you get to draw one card. That part of the effect is mandatory, which is also pretty nice. Now, so on the field, there's a Reborn Tango, which is a Beast Warrior, so Horn of the Phantom Beast technically can target it to give it that nice, sweet 800 boost. And on the opposing side, there is a 1700 attack airlifter. Consider it as a vanilla, as it's not relevant to this case. So we're going to proceed into the battle phase. Player A declares an attack with the Reborn Tango into... You see, this is, the, this is immediately the first question. And I'm going to be honest with you, I am not 100% sure. I... So, okay... I guess uh, let me let me the okay. airlifter and on attack declaration player a goes oh i'm gonna pay half my life points to draw that one card so i'm going to banish the transaction rollback pay half our life points and target the horn of the phantom beast and in turn okay so what they're trying to do is they're trying to copy horn of the phantom beast to target uh, to to equip to the reborn tengu um which i am 99 percent sure does not work because you, I mean, we uh, poll. I, I don't want to poll it. I don't. I mean, we can poll it if 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 one of the mods in chat want to want to do a poll on each of these questions. You can you can do so. Feel free to do so. Um. Listen to the options. Oh, do they give you options? During the resolution, he attempts to target his own monster and then gets the attack boost. However, player B just counters the argument here by saying, "Hey, you can't target a card during resolution. That doesn't make any sense." So they have an argument. They call a judge. Who's right? Who's wrong? Who's the actual fool in this particular scenario? You have five seconds to answer. And this um, I, I think the answer is that they're both wrong. Like, I think you can't use it, but the reason is not that you can't target at resolution. Because the, I think the reason is that you simply can't equip the, the thing. It, it, it doesn't work, but it, it doesn't work for a different reason than what, what the two are arguing about in this hypothetical scenario. This one's, uh, yeah, I know. I know. It's a little bit tricky. Four, three, two. And chat is 70%. Uh, 70% 70 uh, say it's not possible to activate transaction rollback on Horn of the Phantom Beast. One, zero. They're both fools for different reasons. Well, player A's reason is that he targeted an illegal card. Horn of the Phantom Beast, yes, is a normal trap card. However, this particular trap card converts itself into an equip. It's an equip card, and this card also references it itself. Equip this card to that target. Yeah. Now, when you banish the transaction... So the thing is, technically, you can you can equip one card from the graveyard to another card. That is something that I think, I think a lot of cards do that, like Infernobles. It is possible to equip a card from the graveyard to a monster on the field as an equip card that technically works uh, if, if a card had that effect but um transaction rollback is not this card that would be in this case because transaction rollback copies horn of the phantom beast it would it would have to be the transaction rollback that equips itself to the reborn tengu which would be very weird i don't think that's possible like the transaction rollback would have to become the Horn of the Phantom Beast equip card, basically, which is that that is what doesn't work, I think, because Horn of the Phantom Beast states equip this card to it and transaction rollback is not this card. That's why it doesn't work. And rollback, I think you're not going to be able to equip the card. So yeah. that's pretty simple, pretty direct. And therefore, the Horn of the Phantom Beast became an illegal target. And an old precedent to this would be Trap of Darkness and Kunai with Chain. Kunai with Chain has two effects. You can copy Kunai with Chain's uh, battle position changing effect. However, you cannot use it to gain 500 attack and equip it to the monster. That part of the effect is basically not allowed. Yeah. So with that said, you can't basically equip cards and copy the equip cards uh, through the copying effect of a trap card. Sorry, that was a little bit wordy there. Now, what about... What if you use its on-field effect to copy the horn in the opponent's graveyard? Um... It's a very good question. It's a very good question. So is the... Is the reason you cannot do that 
the fact that it's not in the graveyard anymore? Or is it just because in general you cannot copy another card that says this card? Like, is it in general you cannot do that kind of thing to any card that, rec that references do something with this card? I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I would say you could do that. But I am not very, very certain on that. It's, but it's a very good question. I like that you asked that question. It's a good I don't. I don't know. I, I genuinely don't know, but I think that might be possible. Player B. Why was player B the fool? But I'm not sure. Well, I'm genuinely not sure. can't resolve and target a card. But that would basically shut out 90% of all the cards you're going to attempt to use with transaction rollback. So how does transaction rollback resolve? Essentially, when you activate transaction rollbacks, copying effect, okay, so you say so use the graveyard effect, you banish it, pay half your life, target a card. We're going to switch up the card now with Raigeki Break, a very basic trap card that destroys a card on the field, but you do need to target. Now, note, when you copy the effect of an activate effect of a trap card. So this is the exact wing blast scenario from earlier, which I believe the way this works, and in general, the way transaction rollback works, um... And I believe this is a Konami said so ruling, so it doesn't have to be the most intuitive to you guys. Um, you obviously copy the effect. You don't have to pay the cost. But I think the thing that Konami said so is that if the card has an activation requirement, not the cost, but an activation requirement like targeting, like declaring spell cards with Eradicator, you can do that at the moment. Uh, like, you do that. When... Uh, when you um, when you activate that card, right? So, and this is a uh, I think this is a uh, Konami said so ruling. You don't have to pay the cost, so you don't have to discard the card, but you do get to target a card in the field. You don't pay the cost, so you don't you know discard cards. You don't pay life. You don't send anything to the graveyard. You just have to perform the activation. But and I believe you still target at, at active, which would be, it's, it's weird. I, I, I agree with you. It's very unintuitive. Do you, you do have to target at activation of transaction rollback, even though transaction rollback has not become Raigeki break yet. You already target a card on the field that you would try to destroy if transaction rollback were to resolve and become Raigeki break. Which is, I, I, I agree with you, it is confusing, and that's why we're doing this. What about the targeting? Isn't targeting part of the cost? No, not everything before the semicolon is a cost. Everything you have to do when activating... That's what we just talked about. The card is written before the semicolon. That's the attempting of the activation, which includes targeting, declaring card types, choosing a card effect if it says activate one of these following effects. Now, when copying effect, you don't pay cost, but you still need to target and do all the declarations. So if there's yep. no valid target, you cannot activate the card or effect now here's an extra note when you're activating cards in general if you can't pay the cost obviously you can't activate the card but if you can't do everything before the semicolon you also cannot activate the card with one exception if you have a mandatory effect a trigger effect such as trap tricks mermilia that requires targeting but if there's no targets you would basically just skip the targeting and then it would resolve with no effect it's still another another very old school example of this is uh, like a Thunder King Ryo attacking over a Sangan. Uh, the Sangan is mandatory. It will activate even though Thunder King Ryo is on the board and you can't search right now. And then simply it's going to resolve without effect, right? Um, whereas if you attack over an optional searcher, uh, you can't even attempt to activate it. I, I, I don't know which, which one. Well, I can't think of one that is optional right now, but like you couldn't activate those. We all know that, right? activates though so when you banish the transaction rollback pay half your life target ragegeki break when you target the ragegeki break you would also need to target for ragegeki break as well so you would banish transaction rollback target yeah. ragegeki break and through that within the same timing you would also target a card on the field isn't diamond dude's effect similar to the trap uh diamond dude unless there's some crazy difference diamond dude would be the exact same thing but for spell cards yeah so like uh, if you if you send a destiny draw from the top of your deck to the graveyard, we all knew back in the day you didn't have to discard a destiny hero for it. But let's say you you would send a soul taker that is target and then destroy a monster, right? Which targeting happens before you activate it. You can still use it with diamond dude, right?
Does that make sense to you guys? And so when you resolve transaction rollback, you'll be able to destroy the card. In the case where you know you negate transaction rollback and you negate it, the copy effect it essentially does nothing. So that's how you kind of work around the activation timing of certain cards that require you to declare stuff or require you to target stuff. So no, you're not targeting during resolution. You still get to perform the targeting during the activation part, even though you haven't fully copied the effect, but you still need to fulfill the requirements of the card. All right, does that make sense? If it doesn't, leave it down in the comment section. We'll try to get into it a little more. Now let's move on. Question number two, we're gonna keep it simple here. We have in the graveyard a transaction rollback and a copy of Harpy's Featherstorm. And so the opponent essentially has a free turn ahead of them, but there are these two trap cards in the way. Player A decides to activate the transaction rollback, pay half their life to essentially skip the opponent's turn by hopefully resolving the Harpy's Featherstorm. So he banishes it, pays half his life, targets the Harpy's Featherstorm, tells the opponent, hey, now you can't do anything. I don't have to pay cost. So here we are. You're stuck under Harpy's Featherstorm. Player B says, hey, you can't do that. Um, Once again... I'm only like 90% sure on this ruling. But I think Harpy's Featherstorm, if we, okay, if, if, if this does not work the way I, 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 I think it does, then I'm going to be confused again. But um, because Harpy's Featherstorm, we already established cost, you don't have to pay. Activation requirement, like targeting and such, you do need to fulfill when you use transaction rollback. rollback. And the if you control a wind winged beast on Harpy's Featherstorm is not a cost. It's not something you pay before activating uh, or when activating. It is that I think is part of the activation requirement like targeting. So I think in that case, I don't think it works on Harpy's Featherstorm unless you have a wind winged beast. Then it does work. Well, you call a judge. You're the judge. This one's pretty simple. You have three seconds to answer this. Who is correct in this case? Three, two, one. One, zero. Player A is the fool for attempting to copy Harpy's Featherstorm without any monsters on the field. If you did control a oh, not wind that one, please, not the field, then yes, that activation would have been legal. Yeah. But in this particular presented case, there's no wind wing beast on the field. <gasps> so transaction rollback will basically target an illegal card in this case because yeah. it doesn't meet the condition. If you're going to be copying the activated effect of a trap card, even though you don't have to pay cost, condition is different. You still have to meet the condition of that card for its timing, for the required monsters. Essentially, you're copying every part of its activated condition as well. So you can't just blindly go say, hey, yeah. oh, I just... I, I do think once you understand the difference between cost and activation requirement, and once you get into your head that transaction rollback ignores the cost, but you still need to do the activation requirement like the rest of the, of the thing, uh, I think then it becomes relatively simple, right? Uh, the same is true for Eradicator. You're like, okay, you can you can copy Eradicator. You simply don't have to tribute. And uh, but the other part of the activation requirement, the declaring spells or traps, is something you you have to do, and that that's why it works. I don't like my opponent's attack position monster. I'm going to copy Drowning Mirror Force to spin it all back into the deck. Well, your opponent still needs to declare a direct attack for you to copy transaction rollback onto that. Or say you don't like your opponent having a bunch of monsters on the field and they're in battle phase. Oh, I'm just going to copy Torrential Tribute to blow them all up. See, you can't do that again because yeah. they haven't summoned a monster. You're not in the proper timing. So, no, if you're going to be activating a trap card that's going to copy... But do you still need a monster on the field for Eradicator? No, it's not an activation requirement for Eradicator to control a dark monster with 2,500 or more attack. It's a cost you need to be able to pay um if you have the card eradicator but transaction rollback allows you to ignore the cost it doesn't allow you to ignore everything else that happens before the semicolon um so yeah copy another trap card you still have to meet the condition, i'm, I'm, I'm the assuming condition. because eradicator is such a popular card i'm assuming that's going to come up in the video anyways to be met Question number three. This is going to be a basic one, but you're going to see quite a bit of this happen probably during the initial release of Transaction Rollback. So we have a player combining two level sixes into an Xyz monster of Beatrice, Lady of the Eternal, and through the first effect, detach, sending the Transaction Rollback into the graveyard. And through the next turn, during the draw phase, they decide to shut down the opponent's turn by throwing in a Ghost Meets Girl, a masterful Mayakashi Shiranoi Saga into the graveyard. Okay, for that one, I need to text. Card effect does. Tribute a Mayakashi or Shiranoi Synchro or Link monster 
Neither player can special summon monsters from the hand, deck, or extra deck for the rest oh, yeah. of the turn. Essentially a floodgate that only... Allows yeah, you can do that because the cost is just... It, do, it, it doesn't have an, any other activation requirement other than the cost of tributing a Mayakashi. You can do that. Uh, special summoning from the graveyard. You can still use a Reborn. However, player... You should not be doing that, by the way. Please don't do that. <laughs> don't do that to me. But you, you could does all that player b says hey you can't do that and player a says like why that's not an effect that's a condition this is very easy so they argue call a judge this one should take you no time extensions whatsoever you answer on the spot and you tell them uh yeah no ghost meets girl <laughs> that particular card uh the cost is to use the mayakashi and shiro no synchro monster or link monster that is a cost so you don't have to pay that at all but you do get to copy that particular effect and resolve it and the effect is to lock people out and that is not a condition that is not like gimmick puppet locking you via a condition this is part of the effect of course someone's going to be pretty salty and this is why i did wonder why beatrice is still allowed because of transaction rollback maybe we're in a phase where hey we should be able to test it before we ban it kind of deal who knows but then there's also the question of D barrier. So let's go for another floodgate S card like D barrier. What happens when they activate a D barrier and then you use transaction rollback? Can you transaction rollback an already active D barrier? And the answer is yes, you can lock out two things because transaction yeah. rollback isn't technically activating another copy of dimensional barrier. You're merely this is another uh, good example about cards that say you can only activate one uh, one of these cards effects like per turn. Uh, like another big deal about this is big uh, welcome labyrinth uh, because if it ever gets ashed if you have a transaction rollback in the graveyard you can still copy it again because um, you are only copying the effect of big welcome labyrinth you're not using another big welcome labyrinth uh, so this transaction rollback also g goes around uh, once per turn sort of clauses right like it, it does not matter if you've activated a big welcome before you're not activating another big welcome uh, you are copying another big welcomes effect, and that's not something that's that you are not allowed to do. You can do that. Just copying the effect of dimensional barrier, so it's all okay. You are still within the restrictions of dimensional barrier, and you get to lock out both exceeds and synchro, maybe rituals plus fusions, whatever the case may be. Yes, you get to lock out two particular typings. So transaction rollback is going to make that particular disgusting play a bit of a reality. That's it for the basic breakdown of the three questions. But before we get into the complicated scenario, well, first of all, check out mstmerch.com if you want to help support this channel. Really appreciate it. It keeps basically all of this stuff running. You know what? I'm going to keep it running because we've been, we've been, you know, we've just been react anding to the rest. So might as well let him. Uh, if you guys need your card game essentials, such as sleeves, over sleeves, foil sleeves, I got you covered with the carbon series. If you want, you know, tournament level sleeves, white pinks black they all feel like pc white classic pc white they feel like it very very smooth shuffle feel then go for the, the carbon series if you want to get some beautiful foil sleeves designed by me yes i designed them myself and you want to protect them go for the bundles they're really really awesome now there's also the product that not the mind hacker the collection the divider kit that's the thing that kickstarted the entire store and i'm really happy for the support even stores have bought them as well to sort their own store collection so if you guys want to sort your stuff, go get the divider kit. We've got mats as well. And we got new upcoming products, new lines, new colors for the carbon series, new foil sleeves coming up. So you guys definitely don't want to miss out. Check out mstmerch.com. Thank you for your support. And here we go. Let's, Let's move on. Complicated stuff. Transaction rollback in the graveyard plus eradicator epidemic virus. Oh, this well, we've already talked about that. Okay, well. The complicated one so the players have set this particular scene up and player a doesn't care if they're sky striker cash tira okay uh i mean we, we don't have to we don't actually uh we don't have to talk about it again short answer um eradicator let me pull up the exact i mean I, is there gonna be the ex they just want to blow up every single spell card in the opponent's hand Where's so they the... go for eradic card act uh, tribute one dark monster with 2500 or more attack. This is cost. You don't have to pay the cost. Declare one type of card. Uh, this is not cost. This is just activation requirement. You're going to be able to activate Eradicator uh, and declare a, spe declare a spell or trap and resolve it. Let it play. I mean, okay. 
virus. This is a complicated one. So the players have set this particular scene up and player A doesn't care if they're Sky Striker, Cash Tira, or Rescue Ace. They just want to blow up every single spell card in the opponent's hand. So they go for Eradicator Epidemic Virus in the graveyard and they are going to activate Transaction Rollback, copy the Epidemic Virus, the EEV, and uh, try to call spell cards. And the opponent's like, hey, you can't do that. This is a complicated scenario. There's two outcomes to this entire thing. You guys have five seconds to give me an answer. Five, four, three, two, one, zero. So there's two outcomes to this because there's a conflicting ruling and it's mainly because of Eradicator Epidemic Virus's card text in TCG, specifically stating its own card activation. We mentioned this if a card references its own card activation and you try to copy it via an effect, you're not allowed to because there is no card activation. You can't oh. essentially fulfill uh, the resolution properly. Hold up. And so the card I wrong? To references extinction on schedule. So you can use Trap of Darkness transaction rollback to copy it if you're targeting directly as a card activation. If you have like these cards set onto the field transaction rollback, you're copying your opponent's copy of extinction on schedule. That's completely fine because even though it mentions this card's activation, you are still under a card activation when you do the whole copying effect because you essentially did flip the card from face down on the field onto the field face up or you you activate it onto the field basically from a point where it was basically not public knowledge okay so mm -hmm. you activated a card however because extinction on schedule now it, the card text states that during the main phase you pay 2000 life points you ignored that part make both players send all cards they control to the graveyard at the end of the third battle phase after this card's activation now because it mentions this card activation transaction rollback second effect as well as junk collector's effect they can't target um extinction on schedule via that effect because you can't really mimic the card activation so that is something that is it's funny because uh it has nothing to do with bef with what's before the semicolon in uh, in eradicator epidemic virus right it has nothing to do with can i pay do i have to pay the cost do i have to declare can i can i declare spell trap uh, when I'm only copying the effect. This is only because Eradicator, in its effect, references three turns after this card's activation. And the, the, the interesting difference here, the, the important difference here that you have to realize is the difference between a card activation and an effect activation. Um, when you flip over a card, that's face down a trap card or you activate a spell card from your hand you are activating a card if you just banish a spell card from your graveyard to use an effect that is not a spell card activation that is a spell effect activation that is a difference um which matters also on a lot of um negate cards which is sometimes th something that people miss certain cards only say when your opponent activates a spell card, negate the activation and destroy it. Something like this. Um, I believe one of those cards is Evolzar Lagia, for example. Or um, Solemn Judgment, right? If your opponent banishes a spell card from the graveyard to use its effect, like what's an example of it? Uh, what's an example of a spell card that banishes itself from the graveyard to do something? Or add itself... Me Metal Foes Fusion. Metal Foes Fusion, activate the effect in the graveyard to shuffle itself back into the deck and draw a card. Right? Uh, you cannot use Solemn Judgment on that. Or Lagia on that. Right? Which is something... Most people know that. But um, just to clarify, the reason for that is because that is not... You are not activating a spell card. You are activating the effect of a spell card, which is different. Um... Which is this is interesting, right? This this is interesting because if you if you were to if if this is actually the ruling on transaction rollback and extinction of this on, on schedule in the TCG, just let that be clear. People are saying that in the OCG this is different because Eradicator's card text in the OCG is different and just says for the next three turns. This is not information that I actually know for hundred percent sure, but people in chat right now are saying. There's a difference between Eradicator's text in the TCG and the OCG. Because in the, in the TCG, we just read it, Eradicator clearly references this card's activation, right? 
So that particular part of the cartex matters. But what that translates to for eradicator epidemic virus is that, you know, until the end of their third turn after this card's activation, you can't fulfill that in TCG. This is something that's mentioned specifically because specifically transaction rollback banishing itself from the graveyard you are not activating a card you are not activating a card you are activating an effect which in return also means that theoretically if your opponent had an eradicator in the graveyard and you had a transaction rollback set then you would 100 percent be able to do it even in the tcg no matter like you can you can do that because then you are activating a card that's fine Le just like in the other example right now in tcg it applies to deck devastation virus as well so in other words the graveyard effect of transaction rollback you can't use that to copy an eev so so a judge can rule that hey you can't use transaction rollback to target epidemic eradicator in the graveyard you can still use it while it's on the field to copy your opponent's copy but not your own copy interesting but there's a possibility that the judge can rule that you can target epidemic okay. eradicator virus because there is a conflict it's because there's a different ruling stating hey can i activate labyrinth barrage uh by chaining it to eradicator epidemic virus by declaring spells yes you can but then somehow within the answer of this particular ruling it says that transaction rollback either its card or its second effect it can copy it and you can even use junk collector to copy it as Wait, well what? Okay. So in interesting. That's where the conflict stems from. That's why you probably have to ask a head judge. And I know the whole thing was a giant word soup. If you don't get it, we'll see if we can try to explain it down in the comments. As section. I mentioned, but essentially ask your head judge what you're not allowed. Okay, so basically what they're saying is um by all the logic or like by a lot of logic applied in the past in the TCG because of um Because of the way Eradicator is worded in the TCG, it technically should not work. You could make a strong argument that it could that you cannot copy your own Eradicator with transaction rollback, but it is not something we have confirmation on. Like 100% confirmation. We don't have a TCG ruling that says transaction rollback can copy Eradicator or can't copy Eradicator. Is what they're saying. To do it depends depending on which event that you go to, it may or may not change. They should be staying consistent overall in TCG. In, in these kind of situations, I I wish they would just put out like they would just make a decision for the TCG ahead of the card's release and just put it out there, and just be like, yeah, this is how we're gonna do it. Um. Which, I mean, if, if this other ruling, because I'm going to be honest with you, if this other ruling is something that exists, right? The fact that you cannot copy extension on schedule with your own eradicator, uh, with your own transaction rollback, if you can't do that, um, if that ruling exists by that logic, I feel like you should not be able to copy eradicator. Right? Simple as that, from my perspective. Uh, like, if, uh, if, if, this is, if this is a ruling that exists, you can't copy Extinction on schedule because it references this card's activation. Um, then it, you should not be able to activate, to, to use it on Eradicator, is my logic. But apparently we just don't have confirmation that that's how they're going to do it. Which, honestly, I'm very happy that we watched this. Because I was not even aware that that was the reason people were asking for clarification on Eradicator. My, from my, I, I just thought people, um, people didn't really know or get a, got a good grasp of what is a cost, what is an activation requirement, which one you have to fulfill if you copy a card's effect, right? Um, which I think is good. We talked about those kind of things as well in the beginning, right? The simpler stuff. I feel like the 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 simple the simple things is something that everyone should uh, basically um, know now. Um, but the the eradicator thing, I'm very happy that we watched until the end because I was not aware that that was a that there was a conflicting ruling. Because what is this ruling? When resolving labyrinth barrage, 
hold up i activate labyrinth barrage by chaining it to a eradicator epidemic virus that was activated by declaring spells okay what is labyrinth barrage labyrinth barrage labyrinth barrage When you activate a set normal trap card, except Labyrinth Barrage, this card, this effect becomes that normal trap's effect when that card is activated. Wait, but didn't we just talk about how it's different when you activate the card when it's set? Because Labyrinth Barrage is a card you have set, so what exactly? The same also goes for activating... Trap of Darkness, Fake Feather, or Transaction Rollback. Either the card or its second... Oh! Okay, 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 okay. So, um, Labyrinth Barrage, Chaining to Eradicator, works. That does work. Um, and it should work, by all logic, right? It is a card activation, so it can reference this card's activation. That's fine. Um, the thing that gets people confused here is that in the answer... They include other examples. They're like, Trap of Darkness also works. Fake Feather also works, which I don't know what those cards do, but I assume on activation they copy another trap effect. And then they say, or Transaction Rollback, the card or its second effect, which this is the part that's confusing people. Because the second effect is what's not supposed to work. But they included it here in a ruling for a different scenario. They're like, yeah, you can also do this with Transaction Rollback, the card or its second effect. Which, the card works, but the second effect, by the logic applied, should not work. So this ruling is contradicting all the logic that we have and the other rulings. So genuinely, we just have to, we just have to get an, uh, an answer that is not contradicting, right? This isn't the TCG site. Uh, this... Isn't a TCG site? Well, if it's not a TCG site, then why does it matter? There's a note saying TCG might be different. Yeah, there is. This Q&A entry might not be applicable to the TCG. In the TCG, Eradicator Epidemic Virus refers to its own trap card activation. So, is this an OCG ruling? Because then, what's the problem? Like, if this is an OCG ruling, then it doesn't even matter for us. Right? It's the OCG database. Okay, so then... So then it, so then it won't work in the TCG, most likely. I guess, I guess we just don't have confirmation. Is, yeah, okay, I guess that's the whole point. Yeah, we don't have confirmation. By every logic applied... By every logic applied, it should not work in the TCG. How do I find out the OCG card text for Eradicator? To make sure it's different. Eradicator Epidemic Virus. How do I get like a clean translation of Eradicator from the OCG? Is there a resource for that? Like, I, I, I don't know those kind of things. Yugipedia? Okay, hold up. Uh, Yugipedia Eradicator. Uh, okay, I'm here. Eradicator. And now what? Scroll down. Oh, here. Okay. They. Okay. Tribute a dark monster with 2500 or more attack. Declare one type of card. Spell trap. Look at your opponent's hand. All spells, traps they control, and all cards they draw for three of their turns and destroy all cards of that declared type. Here. There's a difference in the text to the English one. It's a different, it's a different text. It does not, it does not reference this card's activation in the OCG, which is why in the OCG, this question doesn't really exist. They, they, it's, it's clear that you can copy it with the second effect, right? We have a different, we have different text in the TCG, which result, results in us having um, a situation whereby our text by our text, you should not be able to copy um, 
with the second effect of transaction rollback. Okay, got it. Okay. Oof, TCG ruling sometimes, man. Sometimes this stuff is... I, and this is why I get all of your guys' confusion. And that's why I think it's important we bring it up on stream every once in a while. Because this is, um, this is complicated. It, it, does make a, it does make sense to me now. After seeing all of this kind of stuff. I do understand what's going on. Um, so there is... From my perspective, there is only two possible outcomes to this uh, that would make sense. The first outcome is that they simply make an announcement that because Eradicator is worded the way it is, you will not be able to copy Eradicator with the second effect of rollback. Because um, this is with uh, the current text of Eradicator, this is what would make sense. This, would, this is the consistent ruling with the other rulings that we have. Uh, if, if Eradicator stays worded the way it is, you should not be able to copy it because otherwise it would be very inconsistent with other rulings and other cards. Uh, the other option they have, obviously, if, is if they want the cards to work together, they would have to errata. They would have to change the text on Eradicator. They would have to... Um, or they could ban it. You know what? That'd be, that's probably the best solution. I came up with solution number three that I think is the best. It takes the cake. Just ban it. <laughs> Just ban Eradicator. Hey, what about... Why don't we talk about that? Huh? Why don't we just why don't we just ban that thing? Yo, I figured out the solution just now. That's the one. Yeah, no, that's the best solution. Just just emergency ban it and even tell people that's the reason. Yeah, there's a uh, ruling uh, problems, you know. That card needs to go. Bear. Yeah, we do that. Easy. Okay. All right, good talk. Um shout outs to Tombox for making that video cuz I mean, even I needed to see that. Even I needed to see that because I was not aware of all the intricacies of freaking transaction rollback. So yeah, we absolutely did have to talk about that. We did have to talk about that. All right. Uh, also, Jokomo and The Wall, thank you guys for the subs. Appreciate that. Also, GeoPre13, thank you for the Prime. Sachi, thank you for the 19 months. That was a couple minutes ago, but because of the discussion, I forgot to, to say thank you. Appreciate you guys. Thank you. All right. We have opened the Maze of Millennia and we have acquired the bond that is fire. Yes, we have. Fast forward to Josh getting rolled back EEV'd in 2024. How is what is the wording on EEV in 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 Master Duel? Is it I'm I'm assuming it's the OCG one? Or did they just use all the TCG text? I'm about to check. Hold up. Just out of curiosity, what is the text? Because I I assume it's just gonna work because it works in the OCG. Like it's even if even if it has the wrong text, it's probably gonna work like the like in the OCG. But I I am curious what the um what the text is in Hold up, I'm looking it up. Why would it work? Because the OC the Master Duel uses OCG rulings, period. That's the reason. Mm -mm. Yeah. Uh, it does, in fact. It does, in fact, have the TCG text. Until the third, until the end of their third turn after this card's activation. Yeah, it has the TCG text. But I'm I'm gonna assure you, like ninety percent. I'm ninety percent sure. Whenever something like transaction rollback releases in the in the in the master duel, it's gonna work like in the OCG. I think like it's going to function like the OCG. So yeah, that's going to be another level of, of confusing if that ever happens, but we'll see about that. Yo, Lenny T. Jerry. Thank you so much for the nine months. Welcome back. Gamma. Thank you for the prime as well. Appreciate that. Welcome to month number six, half a year. Thank you.
Okay. We have about 30 minutes, only 30 minutes, until we uh, record the first episode of the podcast um, with Mr. Farfa. Which means whatever we start now, we're probably going to have to... Um, there's one thing... I was originally planning to just talk about TCG format a little bit at the moment, like look at some recent deck profiles that were interesting because people have been cooking up some cool stuff that I wanted to take a look at. And we will do that probably after the podcast. Um, like I'm going to stay live after we're done. After we're done filming the podcast, I'm just going to stay live and we, we keep doing what we were doing. Um, there is one thing I think we can do beforehand uh, that doesn't take as much time because the video is only like 15 minutes and that's that's the new Garrett uh, Shear video and it's on it's on a subject that I, I feel like I need to weigh in because I'm, I'm a little bit of an expert myself on the um, it, because it's on Rika. <laughs> uh, it's on Rika. Uh, and it's a, it's a, it's, I, I, I kind of like these feature match reviews. I've been enjoying them. I hope there's no, uh, no 15 minutes of basketball references this time, but yeah, uh, I'm gonna link you the video in chat as per usual and pin and pin the thing as well, because I want you guys to go check, um, Gareth, Gareth's channel out, but yeah. You don't like basketball? I I I have I have I don't know. I don't really watch basketball, but yeah. Review match feature. So let's take a time machine back to 2022. It's the European World Championship. How about how about we don't take a time machine back to 2022? Qualifier and no one's read a plant card. Rickus and Avalon will nerf to near unviability. This is still true to this day, by the way. The last van list. <laughs> At the 2022 EU WCQ, it made its very first big breakout with a group of Brits. This trio, consisting of Jessica Robinson, Alex Robertson, aka Betty, and Marcus Patel. These three would all pilot the same build to top cut finishes. Not only took advantage of a format weakness, no one knew what the cards did, but he was also just a, a genuinely good deck. The UWCQ is happening at the very beginning of Power of the Elements format, and most people considered Sprite to be the best deck. With the ability of Sprite Elf to reborn totally awesome for two devastating negates. Um, dude, I miss early Power of the Elements uh, format. I kind of realize that now. That was cool. I will. I want to say. Uh, this is only somewhat true. I don't think the majority actually considered Sprite to be the better deck. I think what happened is people expected Sprite to be the better deck uh, before Power of the Element dropped um, because it was more dominant in the OCG than Tier Limits. Um, but then how it turned out in the TCG, I think Tier Limits was a little bit ahead in terms of popularity and how many people preferred it over Sprite um, over here, I think. Uh, I played Sprite myself. I, I, I thought my, my Mystic Mine beat cop Sprite was pretty good for Euros. But I think in general, the majority of people at that time already thought Tier Limit was better than Sprite. And a really strong resource loop. It was quickly... Which is still, by the way, it's a very confusing thing to think about for me because I think, um, like, everyone was like, hey, in the OCG, Sprite was so much better. That's why we're going to prefer Tier Limit. And a lot of people always mention Maxi. When it comes to that discussion, Maxi is a level two and there's a combo where you can bounce Maxi with your swap frog. I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I think Maxi, if anything, was better for tier limits than it was for Sprite. Because Sprite, if you remember tier and Sprite format in Master Duel, Sprite scooped to Maxi. Tier limits did not. Tier limits just made a Kit Kalos with one special summon, searched Saliac and milled five on your turn. Like, tier limits did not care about Maxi. Sprite did. Sprite lost if they got Max Seed on Nimble Beaver or some shit and they didn't have an out, right? And so I think that was not the reason. I think the actual reason was probably Garura. Garura was an OCG exclusive that, that they didn't have in the OCG and that shit was insane for tier limits. Like that card made such a big difference. I think that was the reason. Not Max Seed. Max Seed, if anything, should have boosted tier limits. Like, I'm gonna be honest with you, if I'm playing Power of the Elements format in the OCG, I don't get why they all played Sprite. I genuinely don't understand. Tier Limit, 
even before Ishizu cards, with Maxi in the format, I don't need Garura, dude. I'm not playing Sprite. I'm not touching that. I'm not scooping every time I get Maxied. Like, I'm playing tier. 100% as the best deck, but that was mostly based on OCG results. Following Sprite would be a widely represented Danger Tier Limits deck, with the goal of just using the dangers to get free bodies on board to summon Curious the Lightsworn Dominion, a card that should have been banned two years ago. Then there was just sort of everything else. Fluandries would run about just shiftering people and <laughs> yes, Barry, your statue was legal at this time. God but what was it, dude, destroying food. top tables at this event was Mystic Mind decks. That is exactly what Alex Robertson's round 11 opponent, Adam Fleming, has brought here to the EWCQ. Sometimes it would be a Sky Striker deck to utilize it, but European players would turn to Altergeist to best use Mystic Mind. Though being one of the most powerful floodgates, denying monsters from attacking and using monster effects, in essence saying you can't win the game, Mystic Mine has its own effect that removes itself from the field if both monster counts. I'm, I'll say one thing. Um, and one thing only. Mystic Mine is less toxic than a lot of other floodgates that are still legal. Uh, the card is toxic and should probably be banned but it is much less toxic than other floodgates that they kept alive. Uh, by the simple reason that Mystic Mine is mostly a going second card, as opposed to these other floodgates that you just set when you go first and you win the game. Simple as that. I'm not saying Mystic Mine should be legal. It is a toxic card. It is not the most toxic card. It is better than other floodgates, yes. It is, and that's why it was banned, because it was stronger than other Floodgates. But only because it was stronger than other Floodgates does not, make, does not make it more toxic by default. It was toxic, but it's not more toxic than Anti-Spell, for example. Um, and Anti-Spell is at 3, and Mystic Mine is at 0, not because Mystic Mine is more toxic, but Myst because Mystic Mine is better. Anti-Spell is still a more toxic card than, than Mystic Mine. ...on either field are equal at the end of the turn. So when Mystic Mine is slapped onto the field, it's either you have a direct response or you need to manipulate your monster counts in order to remove it. It just so happens that Altergeist is probably one of the best decks to utilize it because of the trap card personal spoofing, which allows you to shuffle Why away not both? Your I mean, I, I'm on board. Hey, I'm on board. I'm just saying it doesn't make sense that they banned Mystic Mine and they still have what, like, what is it? Three skill drain, three... Uh... Three anti-spells, three D-barriers, and all that kind of stuff. It, it's All those cards, I think, are worse designs than Mystic Mine. I'm not calling Mystic Mine a well-designed card, but I'm, I'm just, uh, you know. Altergeist monsters from your side of the field to add an Altergeist monster from your deck. No monsters on your side of the field. Your opponent can't get rid of their monsters. They're locked under Mystic Mine until they have an out. And the way that Alex's plant deck is built... He doesn't really have any main deck outs to Mystic Mine. So the guy came over... Wait, isn't it just... Don't you just Rika Glamour tribute your plants? Like, you can. To, like, get me for the future match. I then, like, check my phone, and I just get a message from my friends, like, you're playing Altergeist on future. I'm like, <laughs> like... <laughs> It's one thing to have a huge advantage in your deck building, but it's another to know all the small interactions in your deck and to use that toolbox to beat what's on the board. It's time to beat the most broken floodgate since Vanity's Emptiness. Let's go. Not that Alex isn't guilty either, though. One might say that it's fortunate that Alex is going first here in this game, but Mystic Mine is a floodgate that you can easily just slap onto hey, a full me. combo board. If you don't have the responses for it, you're in for a very, <laughs> very slow game. So Alex sets up a full combo. Bangalancer, Lancer, Strena, set three with Ricka Sheet and a Ricka Princess in the graveyard, Con Con on field. By 2022 standards, this is basically unbreakable. So play goes back to Adam where one of the most terrifying cards in a Floodgate deck goes off. Pot of Extravagance, drawing him two cards at the small cost of essentially not playing an extra deck. Adam Link summons into Hextia with the Marionetter and the Pukuri in hand, sets three, and passes. Betty dodges the Mystic Mind bullet, but there are still plenty of cards that can activate Mystic Mind. 
Alex starts his turn and makes a great play. He simply switches all of his monsters to attack position and gets in a boatload of damage, dropping Adam down to... Yeah, okay, what we're doing here is we're playing around the Mize of the Land, which is another card that people nowadays probably won't remember that card very much but during mystic mind format that card was uh, pretty toxic it was like uh, when your opponent special summons you can activate a field spell from your deck it's not a very good card these days anymore but during mystic mind you would set that and they would special and you would have mystic mind 2300 life points in main phase two alex goes in for a ricka glamour tributing his strena but is hit with i think cards like the mize of the land and metaverse were also a big part of the problem why mystic mind was so toxic is because the card was designed to help going second but people just found ways to make it work going first especially when uh metaverse was still at three right you would just play a deck that would play like uh trap tricks and metaverses and all that kind of stuff and so it wouldn't matter if you went first with your stun deck right you would just activate mystic mind on your opponent's turn anyways so that was a big part of the problem like uh if if it was if it was just for going second and having mystic mind as a going second quote-unquote board breaker uh i don't think that's the most toxic part about the card very valuable ash blossom on the new chain strena is triggered summoning sacred tree beast hyperteon and then adam chains his demise of the land to activate mystic mind from the deck oh boy uh, or Wait, is this even legal? Folks, get your uh, rulings notebooks out. Let me explain. Let's read over Demise of the Land really quickly. When your opponent special summons a monster, activate one field spell card directly from your... Okay, so this card misses timing. This card misses timing. Uh, and I believe uh, Hyperiton is like, su like you summon and then you attach. Uh, I think that's why you can't use it. Deck. Now, the big part is the when clause. In Yu-Gi-Oh, there are two different trigger conditions. There is the if clause and the when clause. In the case of if, it doesn't matter when the requirement was met. It could be chain link 99 when the requirement was met, say a monster was special summoned, and yeah, you can activate the card on resolution. However, the when effects are very different. Ricka Strena is a card that reads, if this card is tributed, special summon yeah. one rank five or yeah. higher plant XYZ monster. Dude, then today it's just a ruling stream. Card as material. If you catch it here in resolving Strena, the first action is the special summon, but after the special summon, Strena attaches herself as material. Yeah, so the then clause in PSCT, the then clause means that uh, they happen not at the same time. They happen after one each other. So the last thing that happened was not the summoning of Hyperiton, it was the attachment of the Strena, which means you cannot activate the Mize of the Land, which is, is worded with a when, so it, can, it will miss time. It, you, 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 you've missed the timing for activating it. On the new chain, Demise of the Land only recognizes an XYZ material being attached and not the special summon of a monster. And if you want some other rulings, Demise of the Land reads exactly like some other cards. Bottomless Trap Hole and Torrential Tribute all work the same way. Yep. Nerd session over. But no one catches it immediately on stage. So Mystic Mind gets activated on Alex and all he could do is grin. So now the Mystic Mind minigame begins. Alex Robertson, in order to get rid of the Mystic Mind, needs ways to clear his entire field in order to match Adam's monster count, which is, uh, oh, oh, zero. So he gets to work. And then after both players pass back to each other, Alex Link summons into an Aroma Seraphy, Jasmine. And then he tribute summons Mudon to make his Con Con live, which can set a Ricka Glamour from the deck. And yeah. then he activates Ricka Glamour here. This spell card is going to be one of his most important resources. Not just the fact that it searches two cards, but it is something that can remove monsters from his field in order to manipulate the monster counts. And also a very nice technical play here from Alex. He doesn't link off his entire field. He leaves the Hyperteon on the field in order to prevent Adam from trying to break his own mine and set up his own board. So play goes back to Adam. After activating another pot of extravagance, 
Alex realizes that his Altergeist opponent has basically banished his entire extra deck face down. So there's little threat of big combo plays remaining from his opponent's deck. I mean, so after to be fair, even with 30 cards in the extra deck, you wouldn't expect big combo plays from your Mystic Mind Altergeist opponent at that time. Adam sets two more face down cards. Alex Robertson sees his chance to break the lock. Alex will activate another Rick of Glamour, tributing his. You see, um, this sort of gameplay, you might not be a fan of it, but unironically, even just the fact that you can out Mystic Mine in these sort of spots is, um, is what makes the card less toxic than, for example, a There Can Be Only One. Because what the hell would Alex be doing with his main deck against the There Can Be Only One? The answer is nothing. He would scoop the game the fuck up against the, against the card like, uh, like There Can Be Only One. And this is specifically why um, Mystic Mind was not always as toxic as other Floodgates. Now, not every deck had a way to do this, obviously. I'm aware, and that's why I'm not saying Mystic Mind is not a toxic card. But the freaking... Um, there is other Floodgates that are more toxic than Mystic Mind, and you will not be able to, uh, to change my mind on that. XYZ monster to search to Rick at cards. That's met with an Ash Blossom, but it doesn't matter much to Alex. All that matters is that there are no monsters on his side of the field and none on his opponent's end. The only thing that could stop this is that- <laughs> This is not an argument to bring back Mystic Mine. It, this is an argument to ban other floodgates that are even more toxic than Mystic Mine. You're, you're, you're turning my point around in a direction that I, want talk, that I, don't, want, uh, that I don't want to. That's not what I'm saying. Adam has a multi-faker in the hand to keep the Mystic Mine on field, but he doesn't, and the first Mystic Mine is destroyed in the end phase, and play is back to Adam. Altergeist continues with the game plan. He's hoping to be able to stick a mine onto the field, as his extra deck win conditions are mostly expended to just completely lock Alex out of the game. So he slaps another Mystic Mine down from the hand, and Normal summons a Silk, and passes turn. But that Mystic Mine is not going to be on the field for long. Alex Robertson has his Ricka Petal from his opening combo. That is going to summon itself from the graveyard to the board and equalize the monster counts in the end phase. And I mean, this is where the Altergeist player would just like activate spoofing to put back their own monster and then, you know. So with no more ways to modulate the monsters on field for Adam, he has to let his second yeah. Mystic Mind... Yeah, he just, I guess he just committed to that too early. If you don't have a spoofing, you can't do that. ...go down. The draws for Adam had to be eh, a bit poor for this situation. As nice as Altergeist Monsters and Rivalry of the Warlords are, they aren't the cards he needs in this situation. Floodgate's not working as two Rivalry of the Warlords stare down each other. Demise the <laughs> land being dead in the Spell Trap Zone. Adam has to concede game one. Mystic Mine is a good card, but sometimes the mine is too mystic for its own deck. In game two, Adam gets to go first. He's trying to draw cards that simply lock his opponent out of the game. I will say, uh, no, no, no disrespect whatsoever to, to Alex. Uh, in terms of like gameplay level, this wasn't all that special because didn't he, he, he kind of played into the first Demise of the Land. Uh, even though he did play around it by doing the Hyperiton, but he wasn't aware of that, so that doesn't count. And uh, and then, like, all he did was out Mystic Mine in very obvious ways that you... I mean, you you do need to be aware of that if you're playing a deck in a Mystic Mine format. Like, how are you going to out Mystic Mine? Like, Rika Glamour tributing your board away and stuff like that is something that, I mean, it's, it's, it's fine gameplay, but it's nothing extraordinary Game so play. far. With the focus so much on Rivalry of the Warlords and Mystic Mine, all he has in his side deck are cards that let Mystic Mine stay on the field. But he's not playing any more degenerate floodgates like Secret Village of the Spellcasters or Anti-Spell Fragrance, for example, because, well, in this format, you don't really need those cards. In theory, the Rivalry of the Warlords is enough to FTK 90% of the decks in the format. Uh, except for Rickus on Avalon. So as a bit of an awkward side deck goes in for Adam, Alex hardly needs his side. Put in a couple evenlies and call it a day. His deck surprisingly has its own solid Mystic Mine outs. So Adam gets to go first. He normal summons Marionetter, sets the manifestation, 
sets one more unknown card and slaps a Mystic Mine onto the field. Editor Fi here. Look, I just like the idea of slapping Mystic Mines onto the field. A simple turn. Hope you can't play through this. Looking at a Mystic Mine, Betty sets a single card and just passes back to Adam. Adam draws for a turn, sees he has no more playable cards, and passes right back to Alex. So Alex starts with one of his most important cards in this situation, Rick Petal. Just like last game, this card will constantly threaten Mystic Mine on the field, being able to summon itself back during the opponent's end phase whenever Mystic Mine needs to get removed. Petal searches the Moodon. So this is where you're supposed to have spoofing. And then activates itself from the hand, tributing the Petal to Special Summon itself. Moodon will search out Kon Kon, a very important card here. Because just like last game, Kon Kon can get Rick a Glamour, which will again be an instrumental card in clearing Alex's own field. And it gets even crazier from Alex's perspective. He crashes his own Moodon into the Marionetter, an actual genius play. Now, Alex could have removed the Mystic Mine on his own turn by just keeping the Moodon facing off with the Marionetter. But that means on the next turn, Adam might be able to push for extra damage if he has extra Altergeist cards in his hand. Robertson deliberately keeps the Mystic Mine on the field. Many players would be in a rush to get rid of Mystic Mine, but on the flip side, you do have to realize that your opponent can also play as well when you get rid of Mystic Mine. So what, what Alex is trying to do here, which is very smart, is he doesn't want the, he doesn't want the Mystic Mine to die in his end phase because then your opponent gets the first turn under no Mystic Mine, right? Uh, what he wants to do is he wants to, out the, he wants to out the Mystic Mine in his own end phase by bringing back Rika Petal, right? End phase, bring back Rika Petal, equal the monster count, Mystic Mine dies, uh, and then you are the first player to have a full turn without Mystic Mine, in theory, unless your opponent gets out another one, right? But you don't want to get rid of the Mystic Mine in your own end phase to not give your opponent the first turn of <laughs> freedom, basically. Alex keeps some perfect patience about him and wants to remove the Mystic Mine on his own terms. Yep. And not only that, but the plan to remove Mystic Mine during Adam's end phase prevents him from yep. activating just another one if he needs to keep slowing down the game. And it gets even better. As Alex plays this game even slower, he sets his infinite impermanence in the same column as the last unknown set of Adam. So as he tries to break free of the Mystic Mine, he gets to negate one of the sets that Adam has. So with no monsters on field, it wouldn't work and on spoofing. Three sets, he passes turn back to Adam. So play goes back to Altergeist, and all they can do underneath Mystic Mine is to set another card and pass turn back. Where in the end phase, just like in game one, Robertson summons back Rick up. I will say, I don't really understand why people are so mad at the idea of passing turns back and forth sometimes. Um, I feel like everyone is so... With modern Yu-Gi-Oh, everyone is so spoiled being like, hey, I can, I can do 20,000 things in one turn, right? And then they're like, whenever a game goes like to, to turn four, they're like, oh my god, how has it been taking so long, right? Like, the one half feels like complaining about how long a turn takes, and then when, when like a card uh, encourages people to go back and forth and have like multiple turns and interactions, uh, they're like, god damn it, r which riveting gameplay, you know? I, 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 don't, I don't really understand that sentiment. Uh. To equal the monster counts and Mystic Mind destroys itself again. And with no Mystic Mind on the field, Alex has his moment to push. He leads with a normal summon of Sunseed Genius Loki. Love uh, that. A normal monster, level Love one, that, that would terrorize European YCSs for the next 18 months. Adam sees this and elects to flip up his newly set personal spoofing, but does not opt to activate the effect to shuffle back his marionetter. Wait, what? So now Alex, oh, there's no mystic seeing mine. an opportunity to deal with the only real unknown on the field, chains his infinite impermanence to negate the column that it's in. On the resolution, Adam will activate the multi wh wh Okay, why did we do that? Why did we activate spoofing for no reason? To which Alex oh. Robertson 
has a Rika princess to negate the effect in the hand. And also to boot with the effect of Konkon. Well, all you needed to do there was just wait for them to link summon, activate the Mize of the Land, and chain spoofing on to get rid of your last monster. He gets to tribute the Marionette on the field of Adam. And if you're wondering what the unknown set was, it was another demise of the, the um The reason why this imperm was smart, by the way, because you're like, why are you open imperming uh, when they could potentially, like, you know, chain the spoofing to dodge the, the imperm and then it would not resolve, right? Uh, the, because Adam flipped up the spoofing without using the effect, if, if chain link one, you flip spoofing, in general, every continuous trap card that has an effect that you can activate. Um, when you activate a card like Personal Spoofing, at that moment, you have to decide whether you want to use the effect right now or you don't want to use it immediately, right? This is where, for example, Master Duel, you flip over Spoofing and Master Duel asks you, use the effect right now, yes or no, right? And if you, if you say no... You are just activating the card. You're just flipping it over to put it face up on the board. You're not activating it. If your opponent goes chain imperm to that, you cannot use spoofing as chain link three because it's not resolved yet. It is not face up on the board yet. While if it was face down, you could flip it and immediately use it. You can't flip, try to flip it, but not use it. And then later on in the same chain, chain the same effect again. You can't do that. So that's why when he activates the spoofing, he makes himself super vulnerable to an imperm in the column of the demise of the land. Because once he activates the spoofing without using the effect, he can't chain it. He, and at that moment, he can't chain it. He can't use it. To wit, Adam. And if you're wondering what the unknown set was, it was another demise of the land. Yeah, another copy of Mystic Mind, basically. Like, absolutely yeah, no, they, they got owned in that interaction, but uh, yeah. Preemptive, premeditated class play from Alex Robertson. He has dealt with essentially two Mystic Minds with just a single piece of non-engine, and it's not named Cos... And a little help by the opponent, I'm, I'm, I may say. McCyclone. Alex is now free with just one unknown in the hand of Adam, and an altergeist manifestation that simply won't... I know with field spells, you don't need to declare if you are adding. Well, those are different kind of effects, right? A card like Pearl or Rhino says when this, card's re when this card resolves, you can add. That is different. That is not like once per turn. If there was a field spell, I don't know if it exists, but if there was a field spell that said once per turn, quick effect, you can do X, it might work the same way. I'm not sure. But uh, they are... Uh, the Pearl or Rhino is different than spoofing. They are not the same. Do anything unleashes a wombo combo now i'm not gonna play by play this this is like 30 different actions but he assembles a big board with big monsters that attack for big spiral resort well spiral resort is not a quick effect to search so that that also not the same damage adam tries to body block with manifestation but teardrop will go ahead tribute that swing for well over 10,000 damage and alex robertson has taken yeah. down a stun play that was uh yeah, I mean, uh, to be fair, they probably didn't know all the ins and outs about the plant deck, but that was a relatively weak uh, chain of interactions from the Altergeist player. Like, it's it, it was just, if you have two Demise of the Land there and your opponent sets a trap card in the same column of one of your things, you can't expose your, you can't expose your Marionetter to the Imperm by just flipping over the spoofing and not using it. You, you simply can't do that. Player with basically a hand tied behind his back. And yes, you can yap about Adam, he could have done this, he could have done that, but it's more to commend Alex Robertson for navigating the known- That's fair, I mean, you can, you can, it's, it's, I guess it's more wholesome to point out the, the good play by the, by, by Alex, because he did, he did do what he needed to do to, to win that game, you know? Situation perfectly. And a lot of competitive Yu-Gi-Oh! knows how the rest of this story goes. Alex Robertson gets knocked out in the top 32, playing against <laughs> another Mystic Mind player. <laughs> because I will say, um, I will say one thing. The, the Rika San Avalon deck was not good against Mystic Mind. It was not good against it. The only because he was able to defeat it there, uh, it does not mean that, yeah, he, he, it was a good deck against, against Mystic Mind. Because only because you had the glamour to, you still had to get rid of your entire board and out the Mystic Mind in your own end phase usually, which wasn't great. You would probably just die next turn. So like, it wasn't great. But yeah, good. interesting video regardless. I, I liked that.
Farfa is ready. Farfa is ready. Yes, right. Oh, right. We're already past two. Sorry. Sorry, sorry, sorry. All right. Let me see. Where is Mr. Farfa? All right. Um, where are we? Up, up, up. Where is... Let me call him. Hello? Hold up. Mm -mm -mm. They should be able to hear you now, but we still need to fix your volume. Wow, wow, wow. Oh, fa, fa. I've been gnomed. <laughs> okay, how is, how is Farfa's voice uh, compared to mine? Do we have a good volume chat? Uh, audio check, mic check, one, two. Blah, blah, blah. A little low. Hold up, I'll turn it up. Beep, beep, beep. Okay, I put it to 110% on Discord, so it should be better now. Hello. Good, annoying. Okay, is it annoying because the volume is bad, or is it annoying because it's me? That's a different kind of <laughs> segment you're talking about there. Okay, so I feel like you're talking in a different volume when someone calls you annoying, so that might be an issue. <laughs> Are you going to talk in your... Is, which one is your normal talking podcast voice? Yeah, the one when someone calls you annoying? Deck here. Sacred Fire King Garunix. Fire King High Avatar Kirin. Fire King Avatar Rangbali. Fire King Avatar Garunix. Echelon of the Fire Kings. Flanvel Counter. Are you... Oh, you're, you use a speaker. You don't use a headset do you uh yeah but i turned i turned the speaker down so you shouldn't be echoing anymore now oh, okay uh echoing no it can't be no now not anymore now not anymore all right all right uh do 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 you, you are show the beautiful the overlay? thingy okay let me switch to the Okay, the link has changed to the OBS Ninja. Hold up, because you. Yeah, will... Of course. But I can just update it. Hold up. Uh... <laughs> oh my God, he's a cat! Wait, is this the first time they've seen this? What this up this thingy? Yeah. The overlay. Hey, Pog. All right, I'm not very central. Let's see. Do I need to go this way? Uh, I can move yeah, you okay. around. Hold All up. Right. No, you are blurry. Why am I blurry? I don't know, maybe your cam sucks. Why, why is Farfa blurry? Maybe that's just how I look. That's just, I'm just blurry. <sighs> I'm just in 480p. I think OBS Ninja sometimes can be a little bit, uh, a little bit bad here. Maybe there's settings on the site that you can... There's audio settings. Um, and video settings. Okay, it seems to have like auto... Oh, let me turn on a light, actually. That usually helps. I'm sure it it's gonna be, be fine. People are meant to me. People are meant to listen, anyways. Yeah, it's it, this is a listening exercise. I know it's it's not usually. Uh, it is true. We are, are not the same size. Hold up, I can make you bigger. He's making me wide. <laughs> He's stretching. He's making me <laughs> wide. Well, okay. All right, that looks good. All right, perfect. Let me pull up Twitch chat as well, so I have that ready. And then we may begin. All right, I'm ready. All right, let's go out and have a great day. Bye-bye. Woo! All right. Let's go! All right, what do we think, chat? Success? Good? I thought it was fun. That was great. I, I had a blast. I thought it was fun. I enjoyed it. I think I did notice that a lot of these topics that we've prepared were maybe even material for even longer talks. Yeah, for sure. Exactly. Uh, but our goal was to just have something generic just so we can have an episode yeah. one. Um, yeah. I really do want to do like a, a deep dive specific topic for like episode mm -hmm. three. Yeah. Um, I, would, I, I would love to do like just something dedicated to just like combo decks. For like an episode i think that'll be really fun you want to debate me on why block dragon is a bad card really really yes, hard huh? block okay. dragon is the most fair balance card ever made <laughs> look how are you I, no I, it's beyond me how we just talked about how super heavy samurai is bad and you're like okay yes 
out emancipator block dragon dude what can i say it's too good uh so yeah if you guys have suggestions for future topics i mean I've, i was like brainstorming some of them we could talk about like literally you know you could do like the big like three you could do like control decks combo decks uh so we could even do a fucking stun podcast dude imagine a stun <laughs> podcast. we just don't yes. do anything for two hours see how that feels <laughs> that's the that, that, that's the audio it's just nothing um, it's just like but we just somehow find a way to force them that in a way that they can't close the app they have to listen to it but it's nothing it nothing is happening they can't do anything yep that's, stun uh, decks that are just fun. the sleep paralysis demons of Yu-Gi-Oh, man the uh the the card price segment i think is really interesting because we definitely need a guess for that and i'm thinking maybe like house of champs might be the best person for something like that or Ruxin. oh yeah i can see that yeah uh, i mean i kind of like guess the card prices though <laughs> you could tell us no we bring Bruxin on for a bandless podcast what do you mean <laughs> you're like let's talk about the price of wanted what do we think uh wanted should be worth and he's like yeah that's uh that's 90 bucks that's not the question <laughs> for the bandless podcast you can tell first us printed went in 2023 one to zero. crazy <laughs> uh power also play super heavy with block yeah that was uh that was a deck i never got around to trying it honestly um we could uh i'm trying to like think of like the actual people right now so we've got like you know we got like the money person for like the product stuff yeah. obviously we got to get like distant and mbt at some point what, what would we do with like mbt like what's his expertise like just being in stupid like i don't know like what relevant subject okay. would you bring him into? God damn it. <laughs> <laughs> Just being stupid. Okay. Being white. Nice. Oh, God. Um, yeah, content creation stuff, I think. Oh, Team Samurai, I think, would be the best for that. Because that guy is like... It, how many subs is he at now? Like, 900? It's at least five. Like um, At least five. That's not wrong. Uh, the semi-casual for MBT. Hmm. Well, we could just ask him like what he thinks his uh his niche could be potentially. Uh, Destin Coder, we could actually do a suspended player list podcast. What do you guys think? Oh, we could get Destin and DK Don to talk about like you know. Oh yeah, they they would love that. Adventure. They would love that. Yeah, we could just do like a a, a ruling segment on that. That that would be a great crossover. <laughs> yes. So step one, we're gonna this, do something really toxic like that, but not tell them. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Uh, but we just don't tell them. We just don't like. Oh, you we know, just we invite just, yeah, them. Yeah, and yeah, yeah, okay, yeah. And they will <laughs> certainly not just leave. Okay. <laughs> Deacon versus near programmer. Uh, you need to get Pack in and ask uh, which card is the best. Oh, we can oh, have Pack for the card prices as well. Or we can bring in uh, Billy Break for what his favorite cards are. Oh, that's a special episode. Yeah, that's like five hours. Uh, did you record this, by the way, just in case? Well, I have the entire stream VOD recorded. But, like, do you have the file for it as well, or is it only in the Twitch VOD? Uh, I'm, it might only be in Twitch. Oh, Monka W. Okay. All Why right. is that bad? No, I was just making sure we had every uh, everything covered just in case. Um, I can download the Twitch VOD after, and then I have a it's file for it. It's probably not a big deal. I mean, it's it'll be fine. Um, so, yeah, you can literally just click, like, I think uh, you go into your video producer, you highlight it, like that specific segment, one hour, 15 minutes, whatever it is, and then you just export, and then it immediately goes onto the YouTube channel, and then we can post that on Saturday. Um, yeah, uh, I yeah, need I'll a get picture around to of that. you for the thumbnail. Yeah, I'll get around to that. All that. Mm -hmm. All right. So, um, yeah, any, uh, any immediate forms of feedback and suggestions, chat? Did you enjoy it? What did you like? What did you not like? I feel like I'll most people the said they that. liked it, but we'll see. Yeah. Obviously, it needs to be within reason, right? It can't just be like you know, replace Josh. Like that's that that defeats the purpose. They wouldn't. DB for English language. <laughs> DB right um... for... Oh God, we get on. We get okay. Hold up, hold up, hold up, hold up. We get Pack and DB Grinder, right? And we give them the weirdest card names out there, and they need to pronounce them. And whoever gets them more wrong wins. More wrong. Okay. Oh yeah, because that's their expertise, right? They're not good at getting them right. <laughs> MBT should be on that as well, yeah. Um, yeah, so unfortunately, I don't think we could like record... Well, I mean, I could like record my thing separately so that I have good camera quality. But the problem with that is like then it involves editing and then that involves like 
bleeding <laughs> money to an editor. Yeah, so the way we're segment... currently doing it, because, you know, obviously I pay my editor and Farfa pays his editors. Uh, we, we didn't know how exactly we were going to do it. So the best way we figured was to just record it in a way that doesn't require any editing, which I think today's was fine. Like I just prepared all the scenes with all the topics on it and it was just relatively seamless. Once it started, we can just take the entire thing and upload it. Um, yeah. But I think I, there's there's no way that the, the, the OBS Ninja can't be the reason, right? I've, I've used this, like people have used this in the past and it works just fine, right? Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I feel like it's something to do with my end, maybe. Um, I gotta like rummage through those settings a little bit more. I on the other hand, though, doing. I genuinely don't think it's that big of a deal. I mean, obviously, we we, we should fix it at some point. You were uh, you were, or like yeah. the video of whoever who's not live, right? If this is an issue for my OBS, if, if I use OBS Ninja mostly, to join right? your stream, but like, uh, genuinely, it the 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 faces doesn't add that much to the thing because it's we we have to keep in mind it's meant for listeners anyways, so we can't show that much on stream anyways. Yeah. I think we should have had more stuff uh, visually because I think you just had the chat up the most time, right? You didn't have anything else at all. Uh, yeah. Well, I mean, it's like I I told you this yesterday. If we have like if we have this, right? It's like it's such a small window. Right, but if you like bring something up in the middle there, I'm sure it'll look fine. Uh, I mean, I like, do you have a? Did you put a window capture there that's hidden underneath it? At all? I have. Hold up. I had, I was planning on doing this, but I just forgot, like, like this. Uh, I had the two player start already, like this. But I forgot to do it. <laughs> but that's about it. Like when I, I, I looked at showing different stuff, it, it just doesn't really look mm. very good. I felt like. Yeah. Uh, I'll have it. I'll mess around for when we get to my stream segment for it, I guess. Yeah. Uh, yeah, also in general, I don't know why, like, somehow someone has noticed and it's really, really irritated them, but the fact that, like, the the cat is on the left and the Ronin Toten is on the right on the logo, we should be underneath our respective mascot, because okay. apparently some people were so tilted by that. <laughs> no, I didn't pay attention to that. Yeah, weird. Well, uh, it's almost like it oh, doesn't no, matter. Right. About, yeah, like... okay. Yeah, that's messed up, actually. Now that I, I can't unsee it now. Okay, thank you for yeah, telling that's me. that's so fucked up, No, dude. that's going to that. be fixed. That's going to be fixed. Yeah, that's tilting. That's tilting. I didn't, re I didn't realize that. All right. Um, I'm going to dip now, so <laughs> right. uh, enjoy the rest of your stream. Bye, everyone. I'll see you for the next filming episode, which is... Okay, let me actually... Did we book something in No, here? we haven't decided when we're going to film it. We were going to do it tomorrow, and then you said... Then you, you bailed. I, yeah, unfortunately, I built. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe Monday? Uh, that should work, but yeah. We could do Monday, and then we can do like another one on like uh, Tuesday, potentially. Like two back to back. Um, I, I'll, I have to check my schedule, but yeah, we'll, 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 next week we're probably going to film one or two. And then we can get ahead um, and make sure that we're always on top, just in case someone needs to not film for a week. I mean, the viewership looked good as well. I don't think like. People were still watching. So I think it was about the same as I, what I had before. Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. It, it seems like people are liking it. So that's awesome. Okay. All right. Peace out. Good night. Bye, everyone. See you for the next episode. See you. Oop, bye bye. All right. I would call that, all things considered, a success. I'm happy with that. That was fun. Just hanging out, talking about Yu Gi Oh for an hour. That seems like a good concept to me. I like that. <laughs> what a nice young man. I don't get the reference, but I know it's an MBT reference, but someone explained to me that reference. Is there, Why is that funny? Why is that funny? I don't get it. It's from The Simpsons? Okay, I don't know that much from The Simpsons. Anyways, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed that. It's going to be a regular thing in the future. And uh, I hope it's going to be well received. Obviously, I have no experience with doing podcasts or all that kind of thing. I don't know how good a podcast is in terms of the way of conveying information and all that kind of stuff. But uh, yeah. Because he's not actually a nice young man. Oh, okay. I see. Uh, anyways, we have about one and a half hours left of the stream. And I figured we were going to dive into some TCG. By the way, 
speaking of because i have been i have been saying that i was gonna rework uh some some things in terms of how we do tcg content and all that kind of stuff and in-depth competitive content i have something that we're not going to be doing it today but i'm going to be announcing it today i suppose next monday we're gonna have a stream um where we build a deck irl from start to finish uh i think the deck i have picked for it is um earthbound runic because it's a new deck and it's i think it's viable i think it's 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 solid and i have obviously it's a new thing so i think what we're gonna do next monday is we're gonna have the entire stream dedicated to building uh, a deck from start to finish including main deck talking about different options talking about ratios talking about combos we're going to build extra deck and side deck com complete start to finish all the uh, all the things that go into deck building right and we're going to do it IRL and that's why we're not doing it today um because you know I want to do it with the IRL setting over here I am th even thinking about getting an even better camera for that because I want to make that a more regular thing on the channel doing deck building with IRL cards and all that kind of stuff if it's well received right I might even get a real camera for this cuz the one I have up here currently is a webcam and I'm, I've been thinking about upgrading to a, to a real camera so that it, may, it looks as good as possible when we do that kind of stuff. And then we're also going to follow it up with another um, thing, which is we're not only going to build the deck, we're also going to play with it uh, against Pack on, I believe, Tuesday. I, we haven't agreed on a date yet, but we're going we're gonna to have a little meeting with Pack where Pack is going to come up with his own deck and we're going to duel um with those things uh, like remote duel uh, i don't know if we even we could even do more than just the best of three but we're going to do like um uh basically what i'm trying to say is i'm trying to make actual like good tcg content that doesn't all that that's not just the good old boring i just go to dueling book it's not very visually pleasing can't do it anyways now that i'm working with konami again but i want to rework the kind of ways that we do tcg content and i think remote duel against other good players slash content creators is a really good way because pack is going to be like i've already talked to pack about it pack is down to do it um pack in in pack's words specifically he said he is down like a clown which i i don't i'm not the kind of i don't understand the way pack speaks but i believe that means we're going to do it and um the the cool thing i think is if we're doing it on stream we can do things like i can tell pack hey i'm gonna mute myself real quick to talk about my options here right and i think that kind of thing could really add a lot to remote content because my biggest problem with remote content is if i'm completely focused on the game right if i'm really focused on the game I can't really convey that much information to my chat. Like you guys are watching the game, but you're not actually taking part. And I think, um, I think if we if we develop it in a, I, I think there is ways to do it though, right? Like if I, if I tell Pack, you know, hold up for for a couple seconds, we need to talk about the options here. Um, I think that is something that if you do it with another content creator, that would work because they could honestly. They could do the same thing from their perspective, right? If Pac wants to, I have no issue with him streaming it. I could even maybe set up a camera, a, a different camera for showing you guys what's in my hand, for example, right? All that kind of stuff. So um, just just be aware that there is that there is concepts that I'm working on when it comes to TCG content. And one of the first things, which I'm very excited for, is going to happen on the... Um, it's going to happen at the start of next week um provided i can get all the cards but that shouldn't be an issue um so that that it's to me it sounds like a cool idea you guys seem to like it so that is something that we're going to look into at the start of next week um skyline also thank you all for the subs during the the podcast obviously i couldn't take time during the podcast to thank the subs so thank you skyline thank you slade deathstroke thank you father iroh thank you hebro thank you her chamber thank you demstroyer thank you grauer fluke appreciate you guys for supporting the channel if you guys obviously if you guys like the content you know following the stream uh or dropping a twitch prime or subscribing to the channel so you don't get any ads helps a ton appreciate you guys for doing that and let us move on with the rest of the content for today because i don't have any irl tcg content prepared for today but what i do have is i want to take a look at some of the decks that people have been cooking up in uh in the last couple weeks uh or like mostly the last week 
Um, also, I do have I do have my food that that I got. I, I got it during the podcast, so it's probably cold by now, but it's fine. And uh, that just calls for a deck profile. Everything lines up. The stars are lining up for a deck profile right now as we speak. There needs to be a deck profile. Um, speaking of deck profile or deck building, I've also another thing. Uh, another update to the sort of things I've been thinking about doing, and once again, tell me, tell me what you think about it. I've been thinking about starting a segment where we talk about um, not a regular, not a deck profile, but taking a, a good list, either from the current format or even from the past, and really, really dissect it and talk about why it was a good list, right? Like why it won a tournament, why certain innovations were a good idea. How how certain decisions were were good when they built that specific deck, right? That is that is something I've been thinking about making a segment. Um, it can be on my own decks, it can be on someone else's decks from the past. Uh, it can be from just like I don't know, someone won a, a regional last week with a really good idea, and we take the we take the list and we break it down. We don't simply we don't simply. Um, we don't simply look at their deck profile and commentate over it, right? No, we actually, we take the list, we dissect it, and we talk about why it was a good list, right? Like, that kind of thing. Um, and maybe even have the person that built the deck on as a guest, that kind of thing, right? That's, that's, uh, I think um, that would be a good form to, to make deck building related content. Will we talk about siding pattern because it's the thing I'm the worst at? I mean, in that... If when we built the deck next Monday, yeah, when we built the deck from start to finish uh, on the next Monday, then um, we will be including siding patterns because we will be building the side deck for it as well. Because I plan on making a best of three against pack happen. So yeah. Okay. All these things being said, let us hop into. And someone in chat already asked for the deck profile. I was gonna watch first because Luke Tyler, fellow fellow Yu Gi Oh content creator as well has been tearing competition up with freaking uh, Cash Tira. Won two regionals back-to-back -back with uh, a freaking Cybers Cash Tira list, which, you know, uh, whatever. It doesn't have circular, so we'll accept it. They're streaming right now? Well, isn't that a coincidence? Either way, Luke Tyler, back-to-back 8-0 -back Cash Tira deck profile. Let's hear it from... What's better than one regional win at the start of the year? Two regional wins at the start of the year. Hello everyone, I hope you're having a perfectly balanced day. I just got my fourth regional win of this season, and the second one this year, playing Heats or Cash Tira. Again, I went 8-0 in matches again, and 16-1 in games, going almost completely undefeated. The deck was mostly the same, but the changes... So, even though... It's, um... Even though it's a... It's it's called Heat Soul Cash Tira. I think the reality of things is it's just probably it just plays Draco Sack to make some link plays and end on a Heat Soul. But we'll talk about that. They'll probably show the combo. I did make worked very well. We're going to do a quick deck profile and then I will show some combos and answer some questions. Not the I most imagine. meta relevant regional, I have to say. Dude, the meta right now is all over the place. Unironically, like the, the power level of the format is relatively low. And going 16-0 against, like, so many different decks is still impressive, no matter what. Like, the power level after the last ban list is actually not that high. The last video, There's a lot so of viable no stuff running ado. around. Enjoy! We have... But I would love to see the Fire King matchup. I'm gonna be honest with you. Fire King, right now... It's not that good. It's not like the 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 Fire King matchup is not the break point for whether a, a deck is good or not. Because the only reason I think people play Fire King is because it's new and because it's relevant a month from now on. People are investing into Fire King because they know it's a good investment. Right now, Fire King is not that good. The deck is being played a lot, but it's not topping a lot. Like it's like the it's like the most represented deck with the worst conversion rate out there. Like, the deck is not that strong. It's a fine mid-range deck, don't get me wrong. I'm not calling it bad, but it's not, like, that good. It's not the benchmark for whether a deck is good or not. For Unicorn, free Fenrir, free Ryzeart. I play free for consistency reasons. One Scareclaw Cash. 
and I still play one ogre and prep. This is still very good, in fact it performed even better than before. This card is very good for making minimalistic boards in four summons, which lets you play around nib. And prep is very good, it's very good at- In general, I think Cash Tira is not a- I mean, obviously it's not a dead archetype, even without a rice art. People are still playing Cash Tira and still having success with it every once in a while. This is not the first time that Cash Tira is seeing success, right? It's not like, hey, uh, crazy guy brings Cash Tira to a regionals. No, Cash Tira is popping up here and there, right? Because even though a rice art was a freaking custom card, don't forget that Unicorn, Fenry, and Birth specifically are really strong cards still. And so deck has a lot of room for non-engine. Deck has some, some kind of cool mid-range combos. People are also not building their deck to avoid Unicorn anymore, that is a big deal. You won't see double Zeus's anymore. You won't see multiple copies of a certain extra deck monster anymore because of Unicorn. So certain strategies really get fucked up by Unicorn. Like, unironically, if your deck relies on a very important extra deck card and you only play one, because why wouldn't you play one? Dude, that Unicorn hits hard. Beating SP. And Shifter is in that deck, so. Because you can just bring back what they banish. Deck is scary. And then onto the spells, we have the four planets. Free birth because this card is insane. It makes your bad hands better and it makes your good hands better. Free Theosis, you don't have to play three of this, but you do if you play Desires. I play one Desires alongside free Prosperity because I don't fully really trust the consistent- It might honestly be, it might be one of the better options if you don't want to play a fire deck, unfortunately, I don't think um, I don't think it will play. It'll be a budget option, right? It's not. It's it's probably cheaper than fire decks, but that's not a very 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 good bar to look at. But wraith Soth is probably still money, and theosis might be as well. Fenrir is still not cheap, so I I wouldn't say this is a budget option. Let's see if Kastura. Desires has been very weird for me. Sometimes it's very good and it saves me, other times it's really bad. Like for example, one time I used it at the regional and it drew me into uh, Birth and Theosis when I wanted both of them, which was insane. And I used it another time and I drew Bosperity. Wait, Rice Heart is 15 great. bucks? No way. That's not true. You're lying to me. Hold up. What the? How? No shot. It has no reprint. I mean, yeah, but it's Rise Heart, man. What the hell? Oh god damn it, dude. Dude. The the Western the Western TCG market is just fucked up, man. I, like maybe even if they made all the cards commons, you guys would still pay 80 for Little Knight. I, I'll say it. It might be a lost cause. And then on to the hand traps, we are playing a hand trap deck, so we play 14 hand traps. Free shifter, free ash, free imperm, these are very standards. I still play two mourner because I think it is very well rounded, it hits a lot of matchups, and at worst it makes floor because it is a level 3 tuner. I still play two draw because I think it's very good this format, I don't want to play free vote because seeing it in multiple sucks and it does have conflictions with shifter. Against the decks where this card is very good though, I do side into a first. I have bad news for you guys. I think next format is a main deck draw format. Sorry, I said it. I said it. I think next format is a main deck draw format. Another one. Then the difference is that instead of playing the one Nibiru, I play one Bell. Reason for this is because Nib wasn't really performing too well for me. A lot of decks can respect Nib quite easily. Bell hits a lot of matchups, and the matchups where Bell isn't good, like in the mirror match for example, it just makes Fleur, which is really good. I summoned Fleur a lot in this tournament because I have 6 tuners in the main deck, and even more in the side deck. I still play 3 talents for going first, I think this card's very nice, because if they hand trap you, you can hand rip them, if they nib you, you can hand rip them, mm. if they bring- Hold up, is this still main deck, or is this side now? I think it's side, right? Dude! Talents has been so weird for me recently, um, and it's also been very weird for other people that I've talked to. Like, Talents has been like... I mean, 
going second because the situation in tcg right now is like every single deck in the tcg is not doing anything super crazy you know like i mean people are playing like fire king which has a relatively fair end board people are playing uh freaking uh like uh what's it called unchained like watered down unchained watered down tier limits watered down hurley all those kind of decks right so if you go second, talents is usually really good because mostly you can just bait out something and then use talents and it's going to be insane because none of the boards are actually unbreakable. But then everyone is like going first. The card is weird sometimes because a lot of people are not playing that many hand traps, which is a very natural. De it's a very natural development that if if the boards that people are making are not that unfair, the next step is then, OK, well, then why do I need to play hand traps? Right. If I. Why do I need to play hand traps if uh, if my opponent is not going to make anything super crazy? Like I can just play like a couple board breakers, talents, thrust, and my own engine and just play into it, right? Um, which in return then is going to make the talents completely dead going first because you're not going to get hand trap very often. Um, because the only hand traps that I really see people use very often is like there's a bunch of ashes, there's some imperms, then there's a little bit of droll, but usually in the side deck, some people still play nib. But it's very awkward. The chance that Talents is dead going first is relatively high. So I kind of like citing it for either like going first if you expect hand traps or going second because it's very good going second into almost any deck. Breathe. You can hand rip them. The card in general is very nice and against slower matchups... I do By the way, new OCG meta breakdown from the Road of the King. Let me guess. 34.2% Fire King. I miss in going second because How close was you just I? draw two or take and it's really good. Even if they don't hand trap you, this card's still very good because as long as you survive their turn, you then have pretty close. Turn three, How about is it? It's thirty it's, it's five point six. Oh god, we were off by one point four percent. God damn it. Cases is stronger than having it on turn one. And then I still play free cosmic for Fire King, and then these three lightning storm and dust of her rescue race, and then all six of these overlap into Labyrinth, along with Bell, because Labyrinth is a very bad matchup. One question I had was to do with Labyrinth, and the answer to that is that game one's a bit rough. It's not the worst because Impermanent Shifter can be good sometimes, but we do of course side this out and then side into nine cards. Cash Tira does seem like the kind of deck where you just play a whole lot of non-engine in your main deck, and then all you do with your side deck is swap around the non-engine for what's good in the matchup. Like you side out the hand traps that are bad, side in the ones that are good, uh relatively simple side deck concept for cash tira i think most of the time you're probably gonna leave your engine completely intact whenever you're siding maybe side out ogre and the trap going second for some more board breakers but usually you're just gonna swap around non-engine ninth card is econ and then I there's one econ one out econ of the blue and two book of moon the reason for playing beast free is because i expected there to be a lot of mirror matches um, and I wanted to also really? have two cards from these three to cover Pearly for sideboarding reasons and one of these to cover Labyrinth. Both of these are very good in the mirror. Econ is better in the mirror going second, but I didn't want to play free Econ because I wanted Book of Moon to cover Pearly. And then on to the extra deck. One Shang. We make this sometimes if we have planets. Big Eye. Dark Arms. It's funny how Shangri era without a rise heart isn't even that good of a card anymore because usually what ends up happening is you have like unicorn and fenrir why would i combine unicorn and fenrir into shang if it just turns into one fenrir again like i just downgraded i'm downgraded from uh i downgraded from fenrir plus unicorn into fenrir plus shangri era which is not better and Flow Metal, this card's insane. I made this card so much. Whenever you pass turn, when you put them on, like... I hold Ash for Shang. I want them to make it. Well, yeah, but a good Cash Tira player is not going to make it. You're going to hold your Ash, and then they just have Unicorn, Fenrir, Birth, and you're just going to have to play into that, and your Ash did nothing, right? So I don't know if that's the vibe. Like, a around a thousand life points. You summon this, they have only two effects, and one of those has to have the Flow Metal. Then, the rank 7 for our turn 1 combo is Draco Sack. This is part of our Cybus combo because it summons two tokens, which then gets sent into Link Spiders, which then gets sent into G Golem, which then brings back a spider to make Heat Soul. Then we use our. Okay, so you make Draco Sack, you get two tokens, you make two Link Spiders, you make 
G Golem Crystal Heart, which brings back a Link Spider, which makes Heat Soul, draws you a card. Uh, obviously, you can't go for it if you have Prosperity. Well, you can make it if you Prosperity it, but uh, you can't draw on your turn. And then you have the Draco Sack left over, so if you have one more body, I suppose you get IP as well. Extra monsters to make IP or no. SP if we want to respect Nib. So we end on Draco Sack IP Fenrir Birth or Draco Sack SP Fenrir Birth. And then the new addition that I play is Access Code because we make this with the Cyburst combo. The reason why this is good is because resolving Draco Sack gets you to a point where you have this and Heat Soul. So you just turn both of these into access codes, which is three pops because you have fire, water, and earth. Okay. And there's even four pops if you want because you I I personally see no issue with playing this because it's just an option you extra deck. It doesn't require any main deck bricks. Uh, Kashira doesn't really need its extra deck in large portion anyways, and just the ability to kind of pop off with two level sevens. Uh, that I mean, that that just seems fine to me personally. Don't see don't see an issue with that. That's like those are the kind of things that I really like when it doesn't require you to play any bricks in the main deck. That's kind of cool innovation, right? Uh, so the only question here is, is this package because this package really gives you one line, right? It's like you play like four or five cards for one specific line. Uh, it's five plus the access code, so it's like six cards. For this one Draco Sack line, do those six cards, this one line, does it come up more often than all the other six options you would have instead? Uh, and I think you have enough room in the extra deck, honestly, to play all the options you need. So I, I think I think the answer is yes. I think that's worth it. You then banish itself, which is really good because banishing itself then clears your monster zone to summon your cast chair monsters. And then we have Typhon. This card's very good, especially when you are Xyz locked by Theosis or Rice Hearts. One Zeus is very important, and then Fleur, which I make a lot because- One Fenrir does this, so why not do it? Uh, no it doesn't. No it doesn't. Or does it? Which part of Rysart locks you into Exceed only? Oh, you, you just normal summon the Rysart. You just normal summon the Rysart. It's just a special summon. Right, 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 right. I always mix it up. I always think it's the Banish one. But okay, yeah. No, Fenrir does this. Fenrir does this if you normal summon the Rysard. Unicorn doesn't do it though, because if you have just Unicorn, you have to go for Theosis. So basically, you can only do this. You can only do this if you don't open with Theosis, and you only get a draw from the Heat Soul if you also don't open Prosperity. Yeah. We have eight level three tuners combined in our side deck and main deck. This is the main combo, which is Fenrir and Unicorn, which is very easy to get to because you have four planets as well as three copies of each of these cards. So we're going to go summon Unicorn, Unicorn, grab Birth, activate Birth, use Birth, normal summon Fenrir, Fenrir effect, search Gagro Kashtira. Then we're going to put this to the side and overlay these two. And we're going to see some in Draco Sack. Yeah, you make Draco. You make effects. you make Draco Sack. Get two tokens. Link Spider. Link Spider. G Golem. Summon out Scareclaw. Bring back Link Spider. A Heat Soul. Draw and then these two make um, SP or IP. Yeah. Okay. To detach Unicorn. It's and nothing too crazy. We're then going to turn one. But token that's fine. Into a Link Spider and the other token into Link Spider and both of them into G Golem. Bring back Link Spider. These two make Heat Soul. Heat Soul. Draw cards. It is true. If you have prosperity, you can just grab those cards and just throw them out, right? If you don't want to draw with Heat Soul. You can't draw with Heat Soul anyway, so you might not want to go for this line. So if you just... Um, if you have prosp, you just get rid of exactly those cards, right? Which makes sense. It feels crazy to me, such an underwhelming combo one. Okay, so what you have to realize is it's not about this combo. This combo is not what's making this deck good. Um is I think the main takeaway that you have to realize is that just the cash cards themselves are good cards. The the ca just the concept of Cash Tira is that it has a lot of good one card combos like Fenrir Unicorn very efficient cards very grindy cards as well especially in Cash Tira Birth so tons of comeback potential very now without a Rice Heart it still is a very grindy and mid-rangey deck, right? Um it has a lot of room for non-engine 
And that's it. It's just very efficient cards overall, with a lot of room for non-engine. That is Cash Tira and the ability to play Shifter. Right? And the ability to play Shifter on top of that, right? That is the reason why this deck is doing well. What you do with your monsters, I don't think it matters that much. Someone in chat said you can do like an ultimate Draco future line. I don't know that line, but maybe you can. Uh, you can also, honestly, you can just play a lot of hand traps and just leave your freaking Fenrir Unicorn Birth on the board. And that's also respectable, right? But um, I think that's just a takeaway. It's just efficient, right? It's just efficient, right? Because one Fenrir uh, gives you Heat Soul to draw two and, uh, and like all that kind of jazz, right? So I, I think it's that's the reason why this deck is doing well is because it's the power level right now in the format is relatively low. So it's not you're not too worried about other decks completely overpowering you, right? Like going shooting for some kind of card advantage, mid-rangey board that just messes with your opponent a little bit and has great follow-up is a working strategy right now. This board would probably not be good enough to hold off a complete like full power combo deck, but there's not that many of them right now. Then we use Devil Cash and Pegasus to make a link too. If we are to not expect then that would be IP. But let's expect this time, and we're going to instead make SP. And then SP can banish this. And this is th that's an important skill, by the way, to realize when this sort of strategy is viable and when it's not, right? Because um, it's a it's it's somewhat similar to the runic combo decks because the runic combo decks never make an unbreakable board. They end on like you know Naturia runic ended on Baron Pass, you know. But it was a good strategy in the formats where that was like where you could actually get into a grind game. When there are decks out there that just kill you over that, then you obviously can't do that, right? But I don't think the format is in a place right now where if your opponent opens Heat Soul, Little Knight, one or two hand traps, you're living. You're you're living the turn. You're getting through. With Yusus, now we use Buff to summon and bring back Tenrith. So our end board is Heat Soul, SP, Tenrith, Buff, and Tenrith, Heat Soul, and we draw another card. If, let's say at this point, we have Theosis, before ending turn, we go Theosis, use it onto Fenrir, summon an Ogre. Ogre will then add us Prep, and we can use these two to make Shangri. So now we have... Shangri. Oh, Heat Soul. SP. Does uh does G Golden Crystal Heart not lock you at all? I thought it I thought it did. I figured it did, but apparently it doesn't. I didn't know that. Buff prep and an extra draw of Heat Soul. And prep can bring back the unicorn from Bash. And then in a standby phase, Shang can summon a Fenrir from deck. So, so I am bored would be Fenrir Unicorn Shang, Heat Soul, SP, Buff, Prep, and then the two cards you draw for Heat Soul. I mean okay. here, when you have a when you have a prep uh, a Theosis on top, that's so this that's, combo is that's, unicorn and worse into Nib, because we have to use the buff to summon a little bit earlier. But it still works. So we go Unicorn, Unicorn Effect, Search Buff, Activate Buff, Normal Summon Rise Start. It's important that we don't use the effect of Rise Start in hand to summon because if we do, then we'll execute slots. So we're going to instead Normal Summon Rise Start, use the effect, Banish Fenrir, maybe use three cards from their deck. We use Buff, Summon Fenrir, and then Fenrir will search for Speckle Cash. Now we use Unicorn and Rise Start to take Breaker Sack, Effect for Breaker Sack to get ourselves two tokens. Then we go once again Token into Link Spider, Token into Link Spider, and then both Link Spiders into G Golem, G Golem to bring back Link Spider, and then both of these to make Heatle. Then we go Effect for Speckle Cash, Summon itself, Banish the Unicorn from Grave. And then Draco Sack and Speckle Cash will make IP, because even if they nib us, we don't have our buff summon anymore, so may as well play into it a bit harder with this combo. Then we have two draws from Heat Soul, one on our turn, and then one on their turn. And then in their turn, we can use IP to summon SP. And one more thing yeah. to mention is that if you do have the here, you want to be using your Heat Soul draw after you've done the... It's just very efficient off of one or two cards, and so you get you get carried by what the end board does, plus the non-engine you have in your hand. So I, I kind of like the concept, it's cool. Over such because you have then deck ended by two before you draw. In a similar way, you want to be drawing in their turn with Heat Soul after you have summoned from deck with Shangri. So, what happens if you have your combo, but you also have Shifter? Because obviously, once you use Shifter, but then you can't cycle this combo. So, it's at this point where you have a few different options. The first one is the simple one where you just do this you go, you Shifter, you corn, grab Birth, use Birth, normal Fenrir, Fenrir, grab Rice Heart, summon Rice Heart, Rice Heart, banish Ogre, and then Birth, summon Ogre, Ogre, search Trap, set Trap, pass, and then Mash Ambush. Which might look bad, but you have to consider that they're under Shifter, and under Shifter, they, they can't beat Fenrir Unicorn Ogre with most decks. Which, of course, none of this is that scary, but you're essentially saying to them, you have to clear everything under Shifter, or else my follow up is insane. So, that is what I would normally go for. Uh, the, the one, okay. So what what we're talking about now is how do we play this deck uh, like when we have shifter obviously because if you have shifter you can't do the heat soul thing because the link spiders wouldn't hit the graveyard right uh this board do I like that board I'm not sure cuz that rice heart there is crying to get zeus right you're just asking to get zeus with that rice heart in defense position all you have, all your opponent has to do is, I mean, you have unicorn to rip the Zeus, so you can't activate the monster effect. 
need to Zeus without an effect. You do need to Zeus without an effect unless they have Imperm. Uh, which preparation doesn't even answer the Imperm because you just, you, you just get Imperm before the preparation is up, right? Uh, so yeah, there's some decks that can do it though, right? I preferred the previous board to this. I mean, you, but would you really not use your shifter though? Is the other question, right? Because you definitely play shifter, I think. But there certainly are decks out there that can Zeus you. Like Pearly, you just auto lose to Pearly with that opener if they have two spells. They just go summon, summon, overlay, Zeus you, go, GG's. Um, you have, I guess you have two cards left in hand, right? Because this was a two card combo and we had shifter. So we have two cards left in hand. Ah. Are there lines where you can hold shifter? I mean, you can't do the cyber stuff without, like, you can't, you can't use your shifter later. You would have to keep it in hand, which I don't think is worth it. I don't think keeping shifter in hand to go for the heat soul line is worth it. Because, yeah, you're drawing two cards with heat soul. But uh, at the same time, you are you have one dead card in your hand now, so it's not even like a, not even like you're drawing two. You're, you're not netting two more cards than previously. You only get one extra card, basically, because you have one dead card as well. And Shifter is one of the most powerful cards in the game, right? You can make Draco Sack and make IP. Uh, well, that depends. Here, did we use... We did use Riceheart to Special Summon. Is the thing in this combo. Also, it plays into Nib. All the other combo plays into Nib, anyways. What you do is you go Shifter, summon Unicorn, search Battle Unicorn, Normal Summon Riceheart, not the effect in hand because if you do, then you get Exes Locks, then effects, Banish Fenrir, and then you go Buff, summon Fenrir, Fenrir effects, search a follow up Unicorn, and be soon to make Draco Sack, and then effect the Draco Sack. I think the entire. They're showing a different line here, but I think the entire idea of that previous line, and I think I like it is that Shifter is such a powerful card that you don't need your board to be crazy. Um, your board doesn't need to be insane. You just have to avoid other ways to lose the game. And one way you could definitely lose the game after shifting your opponent, even if they're playing a deck that's weak to Shifter, is if you get nibbed, for example. So making any play that combos under your own Shifter feels weird, because suddenly, even if your opponent is, a, is playing a deck that is weak to Shifter, which is, let's be real, most of the, most of the decks are, um, most of the decks are weak to Shifter, giving them a win condition if they have a nib in hand just doesn't feel very, very good. Why are we watching Cash Tira combos? The deck plays itself. We are literally having a very solid discussion about different lines, and if you were just listening, you would probably learn something instead of just thinking... Uh, it plays itself because you're probably the first person to just get nibbed and lose the game if you played Cash Tira. And then these two tokens make IP, so then you have IP plus Fenrir. If you want to respect nib, you could go for a similar line where you go Unicorn, Birth, Rise, Fenrir, not summon yet, make Draco Sack, uh, get yourself two tokens, and then use the two tokens to make double Link Spider, and then these make SP. Then you can do SP Banish Shifter, which is actually pretty good if you have two Shifter, because then you can Shifter them a second time. And then you go Burp Summon Fenrir, because if they have Nib, then you have SP here, which is decent. But to be honest, if you want to respect Nib with Unicorn Rise Art, you're best off just doing normal cash tokens. So this combo isn't very side-bursty. I would explain this that This is Luke, yeah. Luke's been going 16-0 with cash Shira at, the reason, at, at, at two regionals combo, back-to-back. Back. Like, okay. Uh, we don't have to go through every single combo. I think we understand the, the overall idea of the deck, which I think is cool. I think it's a cool way to approach this kind of format. And I specifically do think that it is only good in a format like the current one we have. It's not very often that decks like this one are actually strong, because there's been times in the past, after the Arise Heart ban, where I tried Cash Tira in a format, because I was like, hey, you got a lot of efficient cards and a lot of hand traps, maybe it's good enough. Um, I actually tried it for YCS um, Bologna, which looking back, I'm, I'm kind of happy I didn't play Cash Tira, but... Before YCS Bologna, it was like it was like that format where everyone played a bunch of hand traps and it was just like a lot of hand traps and engines clashing against each other. I was like, maybe a deck like Cash Tira can work in this environment because Cash Tira gets to play a lot of hand traps itself um, and it, it has a lot of efficient cards into hand traps. We all know like ashing a Fenrir, ashing a Unicorn doesn't feel great. They trade very efficiently into your opponent's hand traps. But I felt that for... 
For Bologna specifically, Cash Tira wasn't strong enough because simply put, like, if your opponent didn't hand trap you uh, and you just ended on your normal Cash Tira board, whatever that was, you know, there's different options. Most decks in Bologna would be able to play through it because Unchained was significantly stronger. Uh, Tier Laments was also significantly stronger. So the, the, the deck's abilities to push for, like, your, your deck's engine wasn't stronger than other deck's engines. However, I think right now, Unchained, significantly weaker. Tier, significantly weaker. Um, Fire King, also, the engine is not that strong. Like, the, the, the Fire King engine is not that good. On top of that, most of the decks lose to Shifter anyways. So I kind of like the, the concept of... Of this cash tier list. Uh, and it, 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 it really, I, I think, it, unfortunately, this kind of deck, I think, is gonna fall off after Phantom Nightmare because I think with the new, I think with the new Snake Eye support, this kind of mid rangey approach does not really work anymore because the boards are, the boards are strong enough to hold back Fire Kings now, but they are not strong enough to hold back Fire Kings after Phantom Nightmare, for example, right? Uh, which is not true for every single deck, right? Not not every deck is going to die when the fire decks come out, but I think these sort of mid rangey style decks are going to be overshadowed because these boards are not strong enough for the, yeah, for the thing. <laughs> I've seen all your videos on your Plus channel. I don't understand very well everything because I don't play Yu-Gi-Oh, but I like your content a lot. And the only thing I learn is to say Appalooza is cringe, whatever that means. Great content, best streamer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> if that's your takeaway, you've got to... I mean, I guess that's a step in the right direction. I call that a success. That's not bad. That's all right. <laughs> Funnily enough, I don't like Appalooza, but I also don't have a huge issue with Appalooza. Uh, I feel like there's other cards that are more problematic than Appalooza, but it's, it's, yeah. <laughs> this is how Josh will win the streamer awards. There's like no chance we win that, we win that thing. We maybe, maybe we get nominated if you guys are kind enough. But there's no shot we win that, I don't think. How good is Fire King under Shifter? Pretty bad. Pretty bad. But I'm gonna be honest with you, so was Ishizu tier, and that did not hold it back from being the best deck in the format by a mile. Only because there exists a card that counters a deck does not mean that that's enough to make it not the best deck. The category is unfair. Isn't leak in that category? Well, I, I mean, no, it's not unfair. It's natural that other strategy games are bigger strategy games than Yu-Gi-Oh. I think, I think leak is in that category. Yeah. Did you try Runic Snake Eye post Phantom Nightmare a bit more or not yet? Not yet, but it is one of those decks. Um, it is one of the decks that I that we might look into uh in a, in a couple of weeks. If this if this I'm really really excited for the for next week when we do the building a deck on stream IRL and then we play with it on stream as well remote. Uh if those kind of streams are well received, uh we're going to do that a ton, like a ton a ton for different decks and 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 so on and so forth. I'm I'm looking forward I'm really looking forward to that. I hope it's going to be nice. All right. Uh, want to bring some more attention to some other more rogue-ish strategies, I think. So we're gonna, uh, and I, I need to give a shout out once again to the spreadsheet demons, Lampy and, uh, Super Paludo for coming up with all these resources. Hold up. Uh, first things first, I want to look at the overall breakdown. Hold up. We got... For this week in the TCG, total tops of the last two weeks, we have 17% rescue ace, which I find... Is that interesting? How is it looking in Europe? Very different. Where is rescue ace in Europe? What the hell? Where is rescue ace? God damn. What tier limits 
Bro. Okay, there's 5% tier in the US, but the EU seems on mad tier limit copium, which is, I mean, I respect it. Let's look at the tier limit deck that won a regional. Why not? First place at the burn regional tier limits. What is up, YouTube? Chess here, and today I'm with Alexandre and Guillaume. So, Alexandre, you went first place, and Guillaume, you went fourth, fourth place, right? Yeah. Uh, which, which deck? We both play tier limits because uh, tier best deck. Best deck, let's yeah, go. Sure. We got our let's go. <laughs> yeah. All right, yeah, let, let's check out your deck yeah, then. Yeah, sure. We worked on the list together, yeah. and uh, we had a couple changes. So and we played the final yeah, together. We were on the VT that we played against last round and yeah. suddenly he beat me, so yeah, it's fine. Yeah, yeah. I banish all his name with my Bliss 12. Uh, it was cool. Yeah. Uh, it was a very cool game. Nice, so, nice event. Yeah, it was a very cool event. To nice. start the profile, yeah. uh, I play two Rhino Hogs. I change from both one to only two. I want to have less combo summons. One of each name. We have yeah. two, three, three cash. Best cards, let's continue. Yeah, I also play the same. Yeah, I think it's same ratio. Uh, three Diviner, <laughs> best normal summon of the day. Diviner? Without mill five? What are we sending? Oh, is it, is it Beatrice? Mikanko? Put so much pressure, going second, going first. I think there's nothing to discuss yeah, there. Yeah, it's crazy. Uh, it may, it helps you make Barwood really fast in your combo. Wait, from even when going is this? To break this is three months ago. What? Oh, I'm in the wrong tab. What the hell? Oh, there is Rescue Ace. There is, we found Rescue Ace. We found Rescue Ace, guys. Okay, it took me a while. <laughs> it all makes sense now. The Diviner is what gave it away. I was like, what the hell? What are we doing? <laughs> okay. Uh Tier limits are gone. <laughs> God damn it. I was about to I was about to figure out why there's so much tier limit copium in Europe and it's freaking gone, man. Oh, this is so sad. I apologize if you're a tier limit fan in the chat and you uh you friggin uh, had some hope there. Oh my god. Okay, you it's it's a sad it's a sad moment to be a tier limit enjoyer. <laughs> oh no. Oh god. Okay, well. <laughs> we got rescue ace, we got manadium, we got cash tira. That makes sense. That is that is that makes a lot more sense for the current format. <laughs> Oh god, okay. Uh what do we have? We don't have a lot of deck profiles here. Not many links. We have a we have a super heavy samurai deck getting third what What is this? Master Duel? Welcome back to Akuna Maidada's channel. We are here with Isle of Beer. So what did you do at this uh, regional uh here in Italy? I This is a two minute and fifty deck profile, by the way. They took this entire Yu-Gi-Oh! content needs to be more in-depth to a whole nother level. Uh, placed uh, on uh, third position uh, with a Super EV Samurai deck. Okay. Uh, I show you my list. Uh, I've played one driver and one Gamma for uh, the combo. Uh, for the combo? Three Cash Tira Oh, Lambda? Three Ghost Mourner, three Baylor, three Bell and three Ash. Because this is the uh, engine of the um, Entrap. And for the main engine for the for the deck, I've played two Regulus, one uh, Spy, uh, two Scales, because uh, uh, one is for follow-up, uh, one Pacemaker, uh, three Soul Gaia, because he's a good extender, uh, three Soul Piercer, because he's the best in the end, uh, double Benkei, because... Uh, uh, what even... Is the combo if you play if you draw a soul piercer? Like what do you do? One soul piercer doesn't do anything, does it? He uh, might show it, dude. The video is two minutes forty nine. Where when? The second is need when you would use the the field. Uh, three wakaushi, three bike, and three wagon. 
for the one card combo. Okay. Uh, 40 card in the main deck. So let's see the extra deck. Uh, in extra, I played Arches Code and Unicorn for the OTK. Uh, Bayon. Lil Bro's deck profile is longer than. That is shorter than all of his turn ones, by the way, on that day. For the one card combo. I'm uh, just saying. One SP, one Lambda for the combo. Uh, one Typhoon and one Zeus. One Sargas, one Merrymaker. Baguska for Shifter and Draw. Uh, one uh, GGX for uh, Wagon Combo. And mm -hmm. I played uh, Baron, Axel, Sarutobi and Omega for the classic... Uh, so are we making like uh we make lambda omega banish omega trigger the lambda to get a gamma in the end phase rip a card out the hand i suppose okay in the side i've played the one crow one druidsburn one wanyamut one saronir and one baldrick for the despia matchup uh, I play uh, three delta because he's broken and uh, the second driver because i'm crazy uh, three ghost. <laughs> I, I was about to say that. Thank you for saying it. Togre for Purely and three Nibiru for the other stuff. Same way to combo. I don't know. Okay. Some shout outs? Uh, I need shout outs for uh, my channel. Uh, follow me. And uh, thanks for Akune My Data for the, um, the profile on uh, his channel. And uh, follow me. All right. Um,. I'm trying to think, like, okay, so Vakaushi, still a one-card combo. Obviously, it's going to be less powerful than before, without the, uh, without the, the Link one, but Vakaushi is still a one-card combo. They have the combo in their own YouTube, oh, okay, I can, I can check that, hold up, where is that? Uh... If they if they do it quick, let's go. One card combo wagon. Boggers. Bentornati sul canale di I Love Beer. Oggi okay, now it's Italian though. La birra in persona. Sì, e oggi a grande richiesta. E, That's fine. Um, diciamo se volete poi gli altri combo in uh, già in particolare, basta scrivere. You see, one combo. One combo with with wagon. Five minutes thirty. Entire deck profile, 2 minutes 40. Super Heavy Samurai issue, in a nutshell. So I think what, what they're saying is it doesn't matter which of the ones you do, but they, they're going to start with Wagon. Uh, un super ID soul in questo caso andiamo maschera effetto maschera equipaggiamo effetto lo special out facciamo un x rango 4 ed evochiamo ingranaggio gigante x uh -huh. effetto allora in questo spot cosa togli is Fakaoshi a machine? Da are they all machines? I don't actually know significante quindi potete togliere o carro o maschera e andate a prendere O bici. Oh, well, o, you can get the bike anyways. Uh, yeah, you get the bike anyways. Cosa dipende da questa scelta? Uh, dipende dall'altra carta che avete in mano. Se quella carta è un soul oppure uh, diciamo una, un, uh, un altro carro, eh? Prendete sempre Wakaushi. Se invece diciamo volete fare un handball. Why is Wakaushi dark? Eh? I have no idea. Allora, Maybe to make it less synergistic with. Earth Machines? Hanno idea. Attiviamo la Ushi, effetto, lo specialiamo e piazziamo nell'altra zona pendolo Ben Gay. Effetto Ben Gay, Up. andiamo a dare un Oh, it's because it's evil, true. Piercer. Effetto Piercer, lo piaggiamo a Wakaushi. 
Allora, in questo spot dobbiamo fare link 2. Ok, you have to link off. You have to link off your Vakaushi here, which is awkward because it doesn't go back to the extra deck, uh, to the pendulum scale, does it? It's only when it's synchroed or what? Ed evochiamo. Or does it also go back? Sì. I don't remember. Allora, Beyond the pendulum. Uh, qua potete scegliere se fare 1 2 oppure 1 2, come vi diciamo vi è più comodo, tanto comunque lui aggiunge tutti e lui aggiunge Wakaushi, quindi in caso vi fermasse So beyond questo, the pendulum is going to get you another Vakaushi so you have skills. Quindi and then uh, soul piercer searches skills. Yeah. yeah. Skills. Get it? We have scales, but we both of these searches give us scales. In questo spot. Non possiamo attivare effetti di mosso perché abbiamo risolto. Very bene. funny. So we activate Piazziamo this and then we pendulum summon. E andiamo a risolvere. Don't dot 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 me, ok? Uh, dobbiamo per forza pendolare prima di attivare effetti di mosso. Quindi andiamo a pendolare Wakaushi che era finito nella zona extra e bilancia. Dichiariamo l'effetto di bilancia e andiamo a restare Pierce. In okay. questo spot, se noi avessimo aggiunto bike, uh, um, diciamo avremmo ribornato bike. Detto ciò, qua siete in due vie. Potete scegliere se fare. SMP. So what can we, we what we already have here? The, I don't know what we can search with this still that does a lot of stuff, but what we could, what we already definitely have is lambda plus omega. If we had put the bike into the graveyard earlier, we also have the option to go Baron. Oppure se fare Regulus. Io solitamente faccio Lambda Omega. Ehm... Uh, NH6574, thank you for the 14 months. And Seed Sire, thank you for the Prime. Appreciate the support, uh, both of you guys. Thank you so much. Oppure, diciamo, partendo da Wagon, hai un pezzo in meno, quindi... Uh, o fai Lambda Omega oppure SP Regulus. Diciamo, è questa landboard che ti cambia qui. Allora, andiamo a fare la combo che di solito faccio. Are there combos that play around Nib? I don't think you have one card combos in this deck that play around Nib. Sincrotto. Evochiamo Omega. In questo spot, uh, con Piercer, che adesso triggerà il suo effetto. Yeah, Soul Gaia has already been used in this combo. Dato che abbiamo già specialato la maschera, quindi non abbiamo altri extender da specialare. Abbiamo spia, ma spia è un livello 1 che non serve a niente in questo spot. Quindi Piercer ci andrà. I mean, I guess one thing you can still do if you want to play around Nip with a one card combo, if you if you open Vakaushi, you can go Vakaushi special get Benke, Benke search Soul Piercer normal no, get bike search discard bike search Soul Piercer. Um Can Benkei search bike? I don't know. Either either way, either Soul Piercer and then bike, or bike and then Soul Piercer, whatever. Just make sure you have a bike in the graveyard. Benkei can't get bike. Yeah, okay, so then Benkei gets Soul Piercer, then you go... Oh no, you can't even make... Um... Yeah, no, it's fucked. Only the bike can... Uh, the bike can search, can play around Baron. If you start with the bike, you can search Vakaushi. Vakaushi summon, get Benkei, grab Piercer, normal Piercer, Make Axel Stardust, bring back the level 2, uh, make Baron, and then you have scales plus Baron plus a, plus a search of scales to your hand, then you can Pendulum Summon. That is the only thing you can do to play around Bear, uh, Nib, I think. Ad addare Bike, e con loro due andiamo a fare Lambda. Now, okay, so this is a one card combo. Right? For scale setup, lambda, omega. Which is not a bad end board for one combo. For, for a one card combo. On the other hand, if you compare this to what they used to do, this is this seems incredibly weak. But I think the bigger the bigger point about this entire thing is that uh you have to play a deck with only monsters to be able to do this. And this is not worth the trade-off, I don't think. This is not worth the trade-off of taking such a huge... Uh, like, you know, such a huge... What's it called? Like, your deck building is so limited because you're trying to play these super heavy samurai cards 
that I don't think the trade-off is worth it anymore. Drawback, yeah, tra drawback, limitations, whatever you want to call it. For uh, like you, you are cutting so many cards out of your options just to do this. Doesn't seem worth yeah, it yeah, to me. Effect, Even yeah. though I mean, I mean, oh, one card into scales plus gamma plus lambda is like the uh, plus like, omega plus lambda is not bad, but like I'm not gonna build my entire deck around it. Doesn't really add up. But it's playable. Apparently. So you end on, yeah, you end on four cards in hand with a lambda and a gamma and an omega. So you just like, I don't know, the, like, how big is lambda? 1700? They just normal summon something that's bigger? Uh, well, okay, I, even if they kill the lambda, you have no monsters, so, like, you, you can gamma, but, uh. Okay, so, this, I think, is, I'm gonna be honest with you, at this point, I'm, I'm okay with Super Heavy Samurai doing this. This is not something that I would be concerned about, um, because to me, this seems like a mid-range strategy. Right? This seems like a mid-range strategy, which is completely fine in my book. You know, if they want to play a deck that is that has no spell and traps, and then they get to do this in return, uh, and and they because this this deck does never auto win the game anymore. I don't feel like with what I'm seeing here, with the with the kind of combos that I'm seeing, it doesn't seem like a deck that auto wins the game, which is not something that Super Samurai, Super Heavy Samurai has to do in order to be fine. Right? It can it can do it can it can grind maybe. You know, maybe it's fine for you to build it in a grind game way, which is probably the cooler way to play it anyways. Um, but yeah, I mean... I'm... I'm okay with this. I think. Ba -ba -ba. Show that Cash Tira Dragon Ruler list. Where's a Cash Tira Dragon Ruler list? Oh, here. Oh, this was the same regional. Hold up. This was the same regional. <laughs> um... Bro, Hidden Armory snatched steel too. They really went ahead and they were like, I don't need my normal summon. I'm gonna be honest with you. You know what I think? What I think won them their games a lot? I mean, obviously, I don't know because I wasn't there. But I think Lava Golem is an exceptionally strong card right now. I think in a lot of matchups right now, if you go second and you have a Lava Golem and your deck actually doesn't care... If your deck actually does not care about its normal summon, Lava Golem is is insane. Always has been. Not, I mean, Lava Golem is a powerful card, but it not it's not a case of always has been. Like, um, there's been formats where Lava Golem would not be enough because your opponent would set up like varied form of interactions. Like you try to Lava Golem a freaking tier limit player, they don't care. You know, there's a there's a couple decks that just didn't care about Lava Golem. Or there was other times where, uh, you know, there, there was better stuff. De decks that had too many monsters for Lava Golem to be good. Why not Sphere Mode? I wouldn't, I wouldn't recommend playing Sphere Mode right now for the simple reason that I think there's a lot of decks that end on two monsters and not three. Like, for example, uh, Fire King, there's no guarantee they end on three monsters. Uh, if they end up, like, uh, Bestial Runic, for example, as well, does not end on three monsters, usually. Uh, like, there's a lot of matchups where you have no guarantee that they end on three. Um, that's the thing about Lava Golem. Lava Golem is less risky. Um, but the thing, the thing is, if your opponent ends on three monsters, Lava Golem is still good. So it's like, in whichever scenario, you're fine. Lava is level 7. If you steal it with Snatch, it's not level 7. It's level 8. It's not level 8. Uh, you, you can't take it with Snatch, steal, and exceed with it. But I don't think that that's something that really comes up. I, I guess... Uh, 
uh, so you're not going to exceed with it, but it is a lot of damage if you snatch Steel Lava Golem from your opponent. Like, let's say you go freaking... It's actually hilarious if you go something like... Uh, if you open... Like, you, you give them Lava Golem in attack position, then you, like, summon Fenrir and Unicorn, then you snatch Steel the Lava Golem, you attack them for exactly 7,900, and then you just give them back the Lava Golem. <laughs> uh... Wait, no, you keep it with Snatch Steel. That doesn't work. It's not change apart. How do you get rid of your... You, like, Draco sack your own Snatch Steel? That's funny. You can Draco sack your own, uh, your own Snatch Steel. <laughs> oh, God. Hidden Armory for Snatch Steel is funny. But I think, once again, more than anything, this just goes to show that Cash Tira is kind of back in the format, you know? Uh, I am Smiley Sun, thank you for the two months. Is Druis still good in post Phantom Nightmare? Uh, it's a. As a main deck card? Probably not. As a side deck card? Maybe. Depends on what other decks people are playing. But versus the fire decks, obviously not. But if something like if something like branded is still popular or uh, whatever else, I honestly I doubt that Beast deals are going to be in a great spot after Phantom Nightmare because I don't even see many tier two decks happening where Beast deals are really strong. I think it's going to be a I think we might get the get a little break from from Beast deals, but it depends obviously what people are playing because I'm just looking at this pie chart right. I'm looking at this pie chart. And there's like, obviously this is going to change a little bit from Phantom Nightmare, but if anything, decks are going to join the, the, the format that are not weak to bestials. So, I mean, I wouldn't even really, I wouldn't, I'm not even sure if I would side deck bestials right now in a non-dragon deck. Because they're not great against Rescue, they're okay against Minadium, but you can probably think of better cards. They're not great against Cash, they're not great against Curly, they're not great against Fire King. They're good against other Bestial decks, they're okay against Lab, but even there you can have better cards. And they're good against Branded. Like, Branded is the only matchup where they are actually, like, phenomenal. Crow would be better. Yeah, Crow would be better because it also works against Pearly and Fire King. Voiceless voice is weak to bestial before the new support. Uh, yes, but I don't think that's going to be your... I think you're probably not going to side deck specifically for voiceless voice. Voiceless voice seems like the kind of deck... There's a threshold when you build your side deck. There are certain decks that you want specific answers for if they are really popular. And then there are other decks where you try to kind of group cards together, right? Where you want to find... A bunch of cards that work against a lot of them like um uh a card like dd crow right which isn't like insane against a lot of decks right now but it hits kind of like a decent amount of decks a little bit so even if you play against uh a rogue deck you can be like okay i can throw in this dd crow right and that's how you try to cover as many decks as possible especially in diverse formats so Bestials being specifically good against Voiceless Voice, I don't think is enough reason to play it unless Voiceless Voice gets levels of representation that are completely unheard of, you know? Uh, okay, what else is there that you guys wanted to take a look at? There's a hero deck from... That top eight of the regional, but I, I'm not going to be able to give you much What's input guys? on it. Jamie from Tier Zero here, bringing you Connor Kelly's top eight Birmingham regional deck profile. Dude, I'll just say it right off the bat before we even go into this one. Uh, right now is the best time for for rogue players in general. Right now, right before Phantom Nightmare, after the last ban list, this month is a feast for for rogue players. Like this is your time. This genuinely is your time. We've got a huge ban list that hit a lot of um, that hit a lot of uh, meta decks. We don't have the next good decks yet. It's the perfect time to be doing well with all of these, like the Cash Tiras, the 
the, the, the hero decks, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. We can look at Nico's Unchained list. Oh, right, we can. Yeah, right, true. I wanted to look at that, actually. I haven't seen it yet. But Unchained... But, uh, I don't think many people are playing it, but Unchained is still performing. Like, uh, Nico and I think Daniel Hartmann has also been playing it at multiple regionals and topping, like, most of them. Like, that deck is still doing stuff. What did you play? We played Hero. Why did you play Hero? Because I don't own any other cards, and I thought what I'll do is I'll play it on hard mode. So I should be playing Viking, because that's the best deck. This format and next format, but we didn't have it. So we played a hard mode deck. Alright, let's get right into it. So, we played uh, three shots. Sigurd Rare Dark Law on the right side, you already know it's not a real hero fan. Why is the quality so bad? Stratos, so this is just like, you always want to see one no matter what, so there's multiple ways to this. Uh, you can either hard draw it, eat, eat, um, emergency call, hero lives, it's just, you want to see this because it's your one card start, well 1.5. It yes, it's star, it's Stratos. The second effect to uh, Popstar Straps comes up a lot, uh, especially against other race boards and some of the other way decks like... Uh, I have a question. Genuine question, I actually don't know. Is Hero budget? Because it used to be... There used to be a time where Hero was tier 2, but it wasn't budget because it because of cards like... Uh, what was that? A Dusted Gold and shit like that? They were super expensive and Ferris. Is it now a budget deck? Because I know all of that has been reprinted. Uh, there's like cash terror in this event to so, like just pop in birth, pop in the, the rogue, like your home, so you get punished in the middle. Uh, free Faris, this is just part of the main combo. Uh, the it's now budget uh, after all the reprints? Okay. Um, because you really want one in the deck as well. If you don't want to join this one, this is one of the ones that you can actually draw. I don't think. Uh, I, I, Hero is one of those decks that I genuinely think. Uh, is not that bad and most of the time if it doesn't if if like I'm, I'm looking at it from my perspective i usually own i only play against heroes i don't play heroes myself but when i'm playing against heroes there's very often spots where i would be losing but my opponents are are kind of choking right and i think that's a very common phenomenon with rogue decks specifically is because the the super competitive the, the really good players often don't play rogue decks which in, in return makes the chances for rogue decks even worse because even if you discover, even if someone pops up with a good rogue deck, they might not be playing it super well, right? And so that's why I think Hero is one of those decks that is a little bit underrated. I actually think the deck is a little, is, is scary. Um, but like very often when I play against, like literally, when was this? The last the last time we played against Hero in Master Duel was literally this week and they threw the game like five times. It was so, it was harder to throw that game than to, than to win that game. Uh, and they and they managed to do it. I want to combo with. Uh, it's a weaker combo. They're just doing Stratus or Faris on its own, but it's, uh, this is still good. Uh, uh, the Destiny Heroes, we played um, a Denier and two Melee. It's part of the combo. It's actually up to DPE. That bunch of games, which is good. Uh, the last, last Destiny Hero we played was Plasma. So Plasma is just a big body. Um, it's just like towers. Not a lot of decks can have it. They don't have Mega Counts. Um, the people that are inexperienced at regionals, they will hardly know what any of the good decks do, let alone what this deck does. So when they're reading everything, and then you, you know, you go, this is good, go first, I second, go first, obviously it's just... Um I can I say I I I I love Destiny Hero Denier. The design on Destiny Hero Denier is phenomenal because it does it does something that I didn't even know was possible. So Destiny Hero Malicious is a card that is the perfect example of a card that should be semi limited, right? Uh, because there's been way too many decks in the past that have been abusing the ability to have triple malicious, right? The only deck that probably should have access to three malicious is Heroes, because Heroes is, is like a rogue deck that would really appreciate having extra malicious, right? And so what they did was they didn't put malicious back to three. They just printed another card that essentially acts like you have more malicious, which is... It's a phenomenal piece of card design, Destiny Hero Denier, because it specifically is uh, more malicious, but only if you're playing hero. I love that. I, uh, it's, just, it's just a random thought I just had that's been popping up every time I see Denier, but that, I, I think that's very cool. So, because sometimes they make these, these cool card designs, and then uh, it's, I, I feel like it's cool to acknowledge that. Um... But then, then again, like, I don't know, a week before or a week after, they come up with Firewall Dragon, you know? 
It's hard to believe it's the same company that made it's it's hard to believe it's the same company that made the Nair and Firewall. Really? But like other than that, it's not that good. Then for the last division heroes, we played the one increase. There's an argument for two, but I don't want I don't want to draw it either. Is this still a is this a debate in the hero community whether you play one increase or two, whether you're a coward or not? Is that a thing? Luke Tyler, thank you for the raid. We just watched your uh, Cash Tira deck profile a little bit earlier. Well done, well done. Good, sir. Thank you. A couple of times you get punished for playing one, but it's fine to play one. Um, for the last of the heroes, we play one Liquid Soldier. Um, it's just good. It's a good search. Um, this guy also used to, used to be expensive. I feel like all of the hero cards were expensive uh, at some point, this is very which is messed up. Um, you find that your rare sometimes doesn't have a lot of good targets. This is one of them. Uh, Cross keeper. Uh, oh my god! Break. I hate that they're doing this. No, don't make me play more. Oh, nah, man. Uh, you shadow Again, this is just uh, for Bion. This is for uh, a hero lives. If you if you really value like uh, Dark Lord, Dark Lord kind of loses value in a tier, but uh, I think you still want to play. That. Hero might be a genuine budget option for next format because I'm just looking at it. I'm like, I don't think this plays Prosperity. I don't think this plays. Well, Prosperity is not even expensive anymore, but I don't think this plays SP. No. Uh, and then for the spells, we played some very second cards. I think in this deck that. One of the things it struggles with is not having enough cards to play with. So if, if you need cards that do a lot on their own. So the reason why we play Storm and uh, Droplet... Is Wait, we main deck that, Storm? Uh, it, it lets you keep the rest of your hand. It lets you... We don't go second, do we? Do we blind second here? Uh, dodge stuff in this, this case. But then also, just for these, it just means that you have a better race board. Uh, you have a better race matchup because you just have this one card sack in game one. Um, and then also versus some of the other matches. Um, Thrust is needed? Really okay, fair enough. Well, I mean, we'll edge. see. You might lose the board, but... That's only because they have like the continuous and that, so you know, getting rid of the continuous helps you in that, in that regard. Um, I think I, I wouldn't really play other knowledge. Okay, so only because we play those cards doesn't need doesn't mean necessarily that we're going second because. Uh, there's times where you want to play those cards in your main deck, even if you're planning to go first. Uh, I've done it in the past. I've main decked cards like evenly in decks that want to go first. Uh, the logic usually is, which I don't know if this is the logic that is in place right here. I'm just saying one possibility for that <laughs> could be that they think whenever this deck goes first, its boards are so strong and it plays through hand traps so well that it doesn't matter if you have a dead lightning storm in your hand right your deck is so strong going first already that you would rather play the highest value cards going second um because going first nothing matters right um if that's the logic here fair enough but i i, I don't know if that's the logic i don't know if we blind second they didn't say anything about blinding second and all the cards i'm seeing besides the lightning storms make me think we're going first because it's like all the standard hero combo plasma and all that kind of stuff. I don't think we would be going second here. So the logic must be we just need the most powerful cards going second. Uh, Legro more. Thank you for the prime. Appreciate the support. Thank you. Helps a lot. Um, so this lets me kill and it's kind of high impact. Uh, more engine free hero lives. This is this is the this is the god card. You, you want to see this every hand. Um, you, you want to see it multiple times. Going second, they'll do it again. Yeah. Get, get more than one through. It's, it's really good. Um, this is just a bomb card. This is an absolute bomb card. Um, it doesn't come up a lot when you draw it and then get interrupted, but when you do get interrupted, you just punish them so hard. Um, two mass change. Uh, I think this is. I think this is good to play too. I think you can play one as well. Um, it depends on the interaction in people's um, decks, but also this just lets you like tax the power in terms of strats. You always get strats through, and then dark is just um, too good. Uh, so some more dungeon again. These were just um, you powerful one offs. No, sorry, no, you powerful one offs. But the cards you draw up by themselves and they do a lot. I don't think they're playing um, thrust. Foolish for consistency and charmist and crosskeeper. Um, Dude, so this mind. next card. Uh, this, this card is so freaking goofy, man. This. This with plasma is so is so dumb. I it's it's I don't know. I, th th this one, I can't really get behind this card. I'm not even saying they should they shouldn't play it. It's just such a goofy concept that they made this card. The fact that this card it just makes your plasma at towers. But then what does it do? You have to you can't draw while you have it. Like you skip all of your draw phases, so you enter this weird state. Where uh, your plasma is a towers monster, but you have to stop drawing and just beat your opponent to death with plasma. It's such a goofy design. This is a bit weird. This was like 40 cards for me. Uh, it does do a lot versus like the running matchups. They can't you can't like draw while you have plasma on the field. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Any deck that's like reasonable. It's not like they can't see your lava gun on you. This, this does do work, but it's also weird. It's just because you can only get to plasma. That's like what makes your plasma the towers, right? No, I love that card. I won in Mystic Mind format against Sky Striker Mystic Mind with that card because they couldn't deck you out. That is funny. 
there's already a talus because okay. um, yeah, it negates all the effects on the field. But yeah. this, this, like protects it. Or? Yeah, this, yeah, it protects it. It means that uh, while plasma, you can't target cards. Your opponent can't target your cards, um, and your plasma gains 100 attack for each monster in your graveyard. Yeah. Bro, your opponent can't target any of your cards, and you have plasma on the board. What is the out to that in in normal Yu-Gi-Oh decks? Feather Duster, evenly. Droplet, Daruma, Eclipse. Not very popular cards right now. <laughs> Not very popular. Goddess, I mean, ha have fun getting four monsters onto the board under Plasma. Not many decks can do that. Super Poly, fair. Super Poly is popular. Trish, Zero, or Shurig? I mean, your monsters are all negated because Plasma. You're under skill drain, basically. You're under skill drain, and you can't target anything. So it has to be like a spell or a trap card that doesn't target and removes the, the thingy. It, it, it has to be a spell or a trap that doesn't target... I mean, my Bestial deck is done for. It's over, right? Main deck, no out. Side deck, no out. Oh yeah, it's curtains every time. Monsters in the graveyard. They can't be destroyed by opponent's card types. So it does make it towers, but it's like you don't need access, you don't get access to plasma through this a lot of the time. This is just like it's kind of like runic players game. in shambles. Yeah. This is combo piece. Such a pile. This is combo piece. Such a the sunrise. Um, yeah, I'm playing all these. Um, they are bricks in effect. Um, they're nice to draw in control, but um, they're not that great. Uh, consistency cards. Um, uh, this is your main trucks. This is what uh, the combo ends on, along with DP and sometimes plasma, um, sometimes dark wall. But but most of the time you end on this. Um, it's just like a, a pop for every attribute, so you can play a lot of boards. Uh, for the extra deck, we played a pretty generic hero deck. Um, double double Dark Lord, I think you can play one. I don't think you can play two. Uh, this is what pops off the favorite contacts. I kind of have a soft spot for heroes. I've never played the deck much myself, but I do kind of like it because it's always been. Uh, I kind of like how it keeps developing, how they keep giving them a couple new tools every once in a while, and they somehow all get integrated. It's like they ever. How do they do that, by the way? They always. There's new hero cards, and they just put them in. And they all fit somehow every time. This is your favorite contact. Uh, this is a requirement. This goes for game. Uh, this costs bonkers. You also like someone shadow messed up at Vincent Combo, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So th th this, this, card, this card's crazy. This card's like, the amount of people that don't know what the deck does, like Miracle Fusion, Bash 10. The like only that. issue I have, that's a fair point. The only issue I have with heroes is that their, their way of keeping them competitive has, has often been give them Floodgate. <laughs> Plasma in 2007. Then Dark Law in like 2014 or whenever it was. Then the freaking D card at some point for Plasma and, and so on and so forth. The, yeah, 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 that's fair. Dark Angel, yeah, 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 I see what you're saying. Yeah, you're, you're right. Still, there's some, some archetypes I just like, even though they have floodgates. Like, like I like Heroes. Heroes is just nostalgic to me. I kind of like it. It's cool. Uh, I don't like some of the cards in it, though, but yeah, I get what you're saying. The uh, Liquid Soldier uh, Blast. This is only really because it's a wind. Uh, it means that if they try to impact Strauss, you can change Mass Change for this. Um, and then bounce another trap and then do um, Strauss resolve, so this is just decent. Uh, DPA. There's Dark Lost 2015? Yeah, one. fair. Yeah, I, 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 I knew it was 14 or 15. I thought it was 14, but it might be 15. Um, Sunrise is a combo piece. And then the Lynx. Uh, this resets a um, fusion. This searches the Neos. It's a combo piece. This is one of the main combos. You can't play two of this. I, I didn't really find it uh, coming up. Um, the one Dread Decimator. This makes you game. It also outs stuff. Um, it boosts your guys by the number of mon uh, monsters with different names, I think, in your graveyard. Hero monsters with different names in your graveyard. Um, you guys there. remember when DPE was everywhere? Yeah. That's what happened when they tried to give them a good interaction piece that wasn't a floodgate. It was every deck used it and was successful with it, but heroes. I mean, Heroes also used it, but every other deck did better than Heroes uh, in that format with DP. They just, it was just like, they finally made a broken Hero support card again after like 15 years or some shit that wasn't the Floodgate, and all the other decks just took it away from Heroes. <laughs> they just took it. They were like, yep, we're taking that. We like that. The same thing they did with Malicious, by the way. Malicious was, the, was like broken, generic Hero support. Uh, everything else, they just took it. They took it away. <laughs> and to this day, uh, heroes have to suffer from the fact that Malicious is too strong generically, so it was put to two. <laughs> and then they took, they took DPE away as well. Yeah, and it gives it to Um 
Okay, Poor hero player, the man. They can't have anything nice without everyone else just taking it. What was the last card? It's so it's it was quiet. Uh, and the last card was Maguska. Maguska, okay. Uh, there's the time card if you want, if you want to Yeah, so legit. How much is this deck, if you had a guess? Just throw a number at me, because there's no SP, no thrust, obviously no wanted. Like, how much is this deck if I'm picking up everything? Because I'm trying to think about, like, I I'm sure next format, people are going to are, are gonna ask me, what can I play if I can't afford the wanted engine? So I want to look into this kind of thing. A hundred? 80 100 seems too much but i i uh, yeah fair fair estimate 50 some uh, my guess is somewhere between 50 and 100 which is, which is very um i'm not getting any any points for that on the guess the price by ruxin but uh it's i i i think that's budget there's a dystopia card there's a there's a few other choices like there's loads of hero cards not all of them relevant um the main one the main ones you just like if you come along in the game um, it's 116 bucks according to YGO Pro deck. I mean, yeah, we haven't uh, seen the side deck yet. Let's look at that. But Imperm is cheap, right? Yeah, There's yeah, cheap yeah, versions of Imperm, like a couple bucks maybe. Um, Bell is cheap. Uh, Ash has to. Uh, really uh, Ash. Well. What's the cheapest Ash these days? What is like a structure deck Ash? Just out of curiosity, is it what? What is like a? Uh, how budget are Ash and Imperm actually? Two bucks, three bucks. Two to three bucks, three to four bucks, around that. Okay. So I want to prioritize my lab format, so, uh, my lab matchup. So as I'm going to start playing and start. Which is crazy if you really think about it. Like I'm gonna be honest with you, the amount of times Ash has been reprinted by now, even as commons in structured decks, the fact that it still is a couple bucks is insane. It really makes me question whether we can ever really have budget, like budget, budget stuff happen. Because that card it has been printed into Oblivion, man. How is it still a couple euros? I mean, it is one of the most crazy staples, to be fair. But yeah. People buy multiple sets. Uh, I mean, yeah, most people have. I mean, a lot of people have multiple sets of Ash because they want to build multiple decks, maybe. Yeah, okay. The side deck is just hand traps and another talents. Okay, yeah, no. So this is a this is a cool budget list. I kind of like it. I mean, I I don't like the fact that it floodgates the opponent, but I mean. I guess when you are trying to build a budget deck in a format that's going to be dominated by fire decks, you know, uh, you got to do what you got to do, hero community. <laughs> no, this was cool. Okay, where's the, where's that unchained goo? Where's the unchained goo by Nico? Because I'm not seeing it on the spreadsheet. Let me see. Uh, Nico unchained. There we go. There's the man. Hey guys, welcome to the Raid and Trade channel. We're here with Nico, who played Unchained at the Maintai Regional. Um, how did you do? It was 450 players, roughly. I was X2. I lost because of old misplays and one insane RNG game. Okay. I think it's the best deck right now, probably. Because it doesn't really have bad matchups. It's really good into Fire Kings and SKs. Okay. It's really, really consistent still. Some cope for everybody that doesn't want to play Wanted. <laughs> I think it's the best deck right now and Ben is just behind the camera and is like, some cope right here. <laughs> right okay. now at least it's, uh, ben is like, cope right harder, yeah. Nico. Uh, then, uh, unironically though, unironically though, I think the Unchained cards are still really, really good. And I've seen that Daniel Hartmann, who's our uh, German national champion from two years ago, uh, has also been doing really well at regionals with Unchained, I genuinely don't think the deck is bad. Uh, I don't know how well it's going to be able to keep up after Phantom Nightmare, but right now, this month, before Phantom Nightmare, I think the deck is pretty good. Whether it's the best deck or not, I can't say. I don't know. I haven't played enough. But I, I, I think it's playable. I think some of the lines are just a little bit weaker, but I'm going to be honest, the power level right now is low enough for where something like this could still very much be good enough. Because I think the grind game is still pretty strong for Unchained. 
Standard, three Arua, one Shavara, the Shiyama, uh, one is enough, you don't need to. I can show like a, a short how to combo afterwards. <laughs> I watched a Daniel Hartmann deck profile, by the way, from the Essen Regional that I played. And uh, <laughs> it was funny because he just said, yeah, one Sharvara, uh, one, one, Char you don't need to, uh, all the combos work with one, but they never show the combos, which was uh, frustrating to me because I genuinely wanted to know what you do now with one in one, like how the standard combo looks now. I didn't know, and they just didn't show it. Maybe you don't need multiples. Uh, then one album, one Zarama. Then for the special thing, I'm only playing one tour guide with three, uh, three Zarama, no rhinos. Uh, basically Wait, one tour guide with three Rakeas. Okay. Uh, I did think about that recently, that Fiendish Rhino Warrior is weird now. For the Fiendish Rhino Warrior is weird now because I don't think you want to send your only Sharvara to the graveyard to set a trap card, right? Which makes Fiendish Rhino Warrior a lot weaker. Uh, you still might want Tour Guide just as a one-card uh, Yama. But, yeah. I saw someone play Sangan instead. Yeah, you could play three Tour Guides and Sangan to just go Yama to add something, and Sang Sangan adds you, like, a tra hand trap for next turn. I could see that. This is a no Tour Guide list, but I wanted one more normal sum for going first for consistency. And this is basically another Rakia, because if you have Arua, you, summon Rakea you can tour send guide. Blue Dog instead. You can go Tour Guide into Fiendish Rhino, make Yama. Fiendish Rhino sends the Blue Dog, but then what do you search with Yama in order to combo? And what does what is that combo? I mean, maybe, maybe. Arua the Rakea and you play, and uh, if you. Uh, yeah, and if you have a trap, you just go Yama, add Arua, and play from there, or add Shavara, and play from there. Um, Unchained is, is another uh, deck that I just like. Like, I hope it's actually good. I hope it stays good. I, I, I've i never had an issue with Unchained. The only thing I don't like about Unchained is the amount of, like, one of random bricks that it plays. Uh, but the, the way Unchained plays is really cool. I, I really like it. I also like playing against Unchained. Like, genuinely... Most of the time I'm playing against Unchained, I'm genuinely having a good time, which is, I, I think that indicates when uh, when a deck is, is well designed is when even the people that are playing against it are having a good time, which most of the time was the case uh, when I played against Unchained. Not every single game and not every single deck, you know, certain decks, like when, for example, Caesar is way too good against your deck, then I can see you not having a great time against Unchained. But most of the time, I've, I've had a good time playing against Unchained. Because it was genuinely, it always, like, the end board it makes was always breakable. But it was always, like, this sort of puzzle where you have to figure out, how am I breaking the board and also dealing with their follow-up? And so, like, you always have to make the good decisions in the grind games and all that kind of stuff. I thought it was very fun to play against Unchained. I, I really liked it. So I, I do hope it still stays a thing. And if Unchained isn't a thing anymore, I hope that they go back on the Sharvara limit very, very fast. Um, which I, I don't know how, how good the chances for that are, but I hope that if, if Unchained dies after Phantom Nightmare, I hope they realize relatively fast that they should be bringing back Sharvara. It's pretty bad going second right cool, now because probably. you uh, mostly want to like normal summon something, crash into SP, summon something, run over SP, and then play from there. And Torga just get SPs for free. They don't have monsters anymore to crash in, and it's really important for them to like have monsters you can crash into because that gives you like a huge bonus of consistency going second because like every single card plays through SP, every single card combination. Okay, so we're playing three Rakea. This is one. The blue one is Rakea, right? I'm not saying the wrong name. Uh, so we go, uh, we go, we crash into SP to, okay. Um, yeah, and the, con like the consistency going first is just not needed necessarily because you don't need to go full combo to win your games uh, right now. Um, then obviously three prison, uh, six traps. I played one more veiling, especially with the three AK. You want to see, you, know, you always want to see one of the spec ups. Like, you need them. You're oh, Adrian, thank you for the two months. Appreciate you. Pants are jumping so much better with them. Uh, then this for uh, just consistency. It's needed with one Shavara only. This for consistency. This 
I decided to not play hand traps except for Ash. This hand traps are kind of not needed right now. That is true. It's, it's exactly what we talked about earlier. I've mentioned it. He realized it. Most of the decks in the format right now don't make any crazy boards. Like, you don't need to hand trap. I think the only deck that I can think of right now where I'm like, I need a hand trap against it is um, the is Manadium. Uh, if if you're not playing against Manadium with uh, with with a deck like this one, you you just want to draw engine going second. Uh, unless I mean Bestial Runic, he said it has a good matchup against everything, but Bestial Runic does eat this deck alive, so that's that's one thing. Um, three thrust, one talent. It's just good to break into boards right now. It's good to SP, good to IP, good to the uh, This is a lot of good just going second. Uh, one call by. I don't like call by usually, but it's pretty good right now because it works against engine as well against Viking, Eros, etc. And everyone is playing Ash, so this this was this is fine, I guess. And three Fenrir. This is just very good. Taps to Umbrick, Some hands going first. Uh, ben refuses to show us the Fenrir. For hand traps, I can show we later. are not allowed to see the Fenrir. And it's really good going second right now. Uh, for the side deck, I decided to only play Palace hand traps for Levy Fire King. Uh, and just go heavy on breakers. Bell... Is Bell good against Fire Kings? Because... The Runix is summoned from hand on the first turn. But in the grind game, it's fine. Because you can hit a Garunix in the graveyard. I would say something like Crow would be significantly better. Uh, you can also negate Kirin in the graveyard. It does have applications. My guess would be it's, ma it's mainly there... Because it's good against Lab, it's really good against Lab. Um, and because you're siding it anyways for Labyrinth, you might as well also side it in against Fire King, because it's a fine card against Fire King. It's not as good, I don't think, but it's fine. Like this for Risk Case, because I'm not playing Baylor Imperm anymore, and as against other decks as well, this is really good against Fire King. Bell stops the Ponyx in the graveyard. No, Ponyx goes back to hand, doesn't it? Ponyx goes back to hand. It's not, it doesn't summon itself, right? Or does it? I thought it went back to hand. Uh, then three dark ruler. Against oh, bell stops at two. Of course, yeah. No, never. Yo, no, my bad. I, I, for for some reason, I, I, did, I, I have never belled something that goes back to the hand from the graveyard. But yeah, you're right. Obviously, yeah. Combo mirror matches. Apollo's decks. Not that that's super important. Anyways, I'm sure you would rather bell a Garunix or a Kirin. But yeah, you're right. And then uh, three dark kaijus. Is it, uh, it's clean, so you can add a pack of Rage, which is pretty neat, but that's the only reason, that's the reason why you play this. And you can summon this after your Fiend Locked. Um, and this is uh, really important sometimes to, they, like, usually people end on everything in defense against Unchained, you just give them all center attack you can crash into, and it takes away, like, Baron or some interruption for free. Or, like, it clears is... ice. So, he, he keeps iterating about this crashing into my opponent's card. Um when I go second. Is that full combo when I'm playing Unchained? Like, if I'm able to crash... If I'm able to crash a, a, a Rakea, for example, is that combo? Or, or like, why is it that important that I can crash into the Kaiju? Because what do I do? I crash with Rakea. What do I do? Abomination in damage step? I mean, yeah, you can abomination, but that doesn't give you combo. With a trap, it is. Well, I mean, but it, all, most of the cards are two card combos with the traps anyways, right? Like, uh, like Rakea is already combo with a trap. R uh, Ruha is already combo with a trap. Sharvara is already combo with a trap. I don't need to crash for that. So I'm not in shock. I'm not that. That's one thing I don't entirely understand why it's so important to be able to crash. Uh, so like I I crash and then I get Sarama, but then I can't really do anything with the Sarama because if I reset the thing in the graveyard that ju that just crashed, I can't pop that because it's already been used. I don't know. Because IP is really like annoying to get rid of in this deck. Um. I think you do it like that to out the SP, then combo with what you have in hand. Uh, fair enough. That's why I didn't say anything earlier when he talked about SP, right? But when he talked about the Kaiju just now, he's like, oh, everyone summons everything 
in defense against Unchained. Uh, obviously, if they have an SP, ha they have something in attack anyways. That isn't an argument for why it's a Kaiju to give them something in attack so I can crash, right? That's why I specifically brought it up right now. And it works against purely, it works against Centurion, so they can look for them to drop you. Uh, it was pretty good for me. Um, Obviously, a kaiju is still a good card in general, I'm, and I'm sure the main reason is not to crash into it. I'm just, I'm just wondering why we're iterating over that. And for the extra deck, extra deck uh, yep. three, three yama is needed for the rank right now. Uh, two rage is enough. I never need the third. Two anguish is needed uh, because uh, against fire king and some other decks, you just need to grind more and to remove their stuff. And you cannot always yama bring back anguish because that, you, you often have to yama bring back like shavara or sarama in the grand game, so you cannot always. Go for this. Yeah, it's non destruction removal that works yeah, under Fiend Lock. It's, yeah, it's really like, yeah. Two should be mandatory right now. This wow. deck seems very fun. It's a shame I never entered a big event with it. I hope it stays relevant uh, at least a little longer. One I really album do. is just needed. Uh, this is not needed, I guess I never made this. Like, it's, it's in there for safety, but it's. In never theory, yeah. Uh, one SP. This should have been two, probably. I lost one match and one extra game because I didn't play two. Uh, then this Abyss Actor Super Producer. Uh, this is a Link 2 that needs one Fiend and one other monster, and you can pop one face-up card you control. You don't have to resolve the second effect. And it comes up in some, like, going, going first, it comes up in some weird hands. Like, if you have, like, this, for example, like, double Arua Trap or this plus Tour Guide, you can just go into the Link, pop your Arua and some Shabara and go from there. And it comes up so going second a lot, where you go, like, uh, Yama at, at something and you want to trigger Yama but you don't have any pop so you link off Yama in this pop and you can instantly Yama grip on your anguish for example or your album to okay. uh, keep playing. That's cool. So, uh, it came up like two or three times. I so it's just that... a link to that pops one of your cards. I see. Kinda good. Should probably be played. A uh, unicorn never made this. This should be second SP probably. Like you're never, you're never fiend locked if you want to. You could... Oh no, it needs a fiend. I was about to say you could think about using uh some engines that just put bodies onto the board as a way as a, as like a, as a way to get starters in Unchained now because it lets you pop one of your cards, but one of them would have to be a fiend, which makes it harder. I don't know. It only pops face ups. Okay, that also makes it worse. Yeah, but the option seems right. Uh, short. Uh, the end just a short uh, combo thing. Uh, I don't know if you. I only, I never go for Caesar except if I can guarantee to end on both traps. I never go for Caesar otherwise. I just, uh, hello, okay. link into this. Set the, your, your priority. Wait, where do these two come from? Well, how do I have both? Because. You always want to end on escape right now, I think. Because this is super good, the interest case, etc. So you prioritize this, uh, Yama at, uh, Arua, you go Arua on trap, trap, summon, Sarama. Like, this is the basic line if you only have, like, any, like, of the two card things. Uh, you go into Rage here, and then you go Sarama on trap, pop the Rage, and Rage just add back Shabara. And then, depending if you have, the, like, access to your Rewind trap, or you have Thrust, so after even you can guarantee the, e uh, after, sorry, the Bureau, you can guarantee the Rewind trap, you can go for uh, Shayama on Sarama, Sarama effect. Float into Aruha. Oh, we didn't even use Yama. Or Rakea, whatever here. you want to, want to end on. Rakea is better if it's unused, otherwise it's Aruha. Then you go this, pop this, summon whatever the other name was from deck, and you go Caesar here. And uh, you should never take Yama out of great first turn because. Every opener always gets, to, gets you to Shayama Sharvara. Uh, so if I draw Aruha plus Trap, you're saying I go Aruha, pop the Trap, summon Rakea. How do I have both level 6s? You lose a lot of follow up, you lose a lot of grand game. Okay. Uh, this is just more stable. Okay. Any shoutouts? Uh, summon Shayama. Okay, so you go, you summon, okay, summon Shayama, pop your other. Okay, yeah, I see it. Uh, so you have the trap in the graveyard and the two. Okay. Yeah, I get it. Uh, yeah, um, shout out to Levin for... Uh... Alright. No, that's cool. So basically... Basically what you do with Unchained is you... You don't end on Caesar that much anymore because you don't have extra... You don't want to play extra level 6s. Uh, I mean, you can't play extra Sharvaras. But... Uh, 
you also don't want to play extra Shayamas because Shayama is an awful draw. Um, so you just shoot for the end boards that don't have Caesar, right? You just go for the grindy end boards with like rage uh, and, and trap cards and all that kind of stuff and you just play from there, right? Uh, I can see that. That's, that probably is still good enough for the current format. I'm gonna be honest with you. Unchained, I see no reason why Unchained wouldn't at least be uh, playable right now. Like, it's definitely still a good deck. I, I like it. I, I think it's cool. I like it. All right. And with that, we are closing in to the end of the Thursday stream. I hope you enjoyed the stream, everybody. Thank you guys so much for watching. Oh, no, before we head off, there's another thing I needed to show you. I needed to remind you guys. I almost forgot. I almost forgot. I need to remind you guys of the Duel Links tournament that's happening on Sunday because this is not the last time I'm going to be streaming this week. I, Your boy is back on the Konami-sponsored content and we're doing... The first thing we're doing is uh, we're, we're, I'm casting the Duel Links 7th Anniversary uh, Challenger Cup this upcoming Sunday, which I believe it's going to be live on my channel. I don't know if they are doing it on their channel or if they're doing it on mine. I don't know the exact specifics, but it's definitely happening on Sunday. And uh, I know not all of you guys play Duel Links. If you don't play Duel Links, that's completely fine. If you do play Duel Links, though, feel free to check it out. Hold up. I'm going to give you... I'm going to give you the link to this thing in a second. I'll just link you the tweet. I'll link you the tweet. And I'm going to be honest with you. Last time, when I told you about this the first time, I didn't know what the prizes were. The prizes for this thing are actually demon. Like, the freaking... The, you guys remember the freaking crystal BLS? How much that was worth? Yeah, you're getting a crystal dark magician girl. And you're getting a crystal stardust dragon ball. For the, for the Duel Links Invitational. And then there's also a Rush Duel version. Which gives you the crystal dark magician girl as well. And a Zexel medallion, whatever that is. But like the, the freaking crystal cards are hype. So... You you might consider friggin you might consider uh, updating that uh, that Duel Links app on your phone and maybe checking out the Challenger Cups. They're obviously completely free, so you go ahead and go to this Twitter thing. It's it, it it has a link to the Discord. It has a link to the Discord, and you can join the Challenger Cups for free. They are already somewhat filled full, so if you want to take part, I I suggest you hurry up because I don't think there's that many slots left to to sign up. But uh, even if you don't get to sign up, if you are interested in this tournament, uh, the coverage is going to be live on this channel and I believe on Farfas as well this upcoming Sunday. We're going to commentate it together uh, and we're going to have a good time. So you're getting a bonus stream on, on Sunday this week. And well, once again, I would appreciate if you guys signed up for this tournament so that potentially one of our one of us one of the community can can take this thing down. It would be very hyped to see one of you guys take it down. Anyways. That is going to be it from me for today. I will see you guys all on Sunday. Let me check where I send you guys. Um, but already, thank you guys so much for watching today. Thank you for all the follows, all the subs as per usual. I hope you enjoyed the stream. Don't forget to nominate your boy for the streamer awards. Uh, I made a tweet about that too. Uh, make sure to go and do that. Um... And I'll just send you guys over to... I'll send you guys over to Nifroth. Why not? Haven't raided Nif Nifroth in a while. And uh, I hope you enjoyed the stream. I hope you look forward to next week where we're doing uh, some new TCG content, deck building, remote duels, and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, looking forward to see you guys there. And uh, I will give you all of the info about the podcast, either on Twitter, so you can go exclamation mark socials and follow me on Twitter, or on my Discord server, so you can go exclamation mark Discord and check out my Discord server. Uh, the, the 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 channel, the YouTube channel for the for the podcast, the Spotify link to the podcast, it's all gonna be out there. You're not gonna miss it. Don't worry. Hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Hope you have a wonderful start for your weekend, and I'll see you guys on Sunday. Bye bye, everybody. Peace. Thanks for watching. Bye bye.